Hello and welcome, my friends, to the Breakfast Club. We're here Monday, April 15th, 2024. And the markets are, as usual, bouncing around inside that uh, big high resistance kind of uh, daily setups here. Let me get rid of these guys. I went long on one of those. Love you, honey. Have a great day. Let me make sure that we're uh, up and live here. And then I'll give you my little rundown on what I thought about. Uh, was there on Telegram? We're wondering why I was saying I'm just ignoring all these candles. I'll explain why. What I was meaning by that. Hope you guys had an awesome weekend. Get to spend time with your family and not too much time in the charts. And... You get a chance to, uh, who's through the door first this morning? Dave Barry. Good morning, Dave. You're the first through the door this morning. All right. So I caught this one here this morning, and Dave, you'll appreciate this. I caught a run from here to here this morning, I think it was. Yeah. I caught this run up and then got cut out up here. Just on that nice little reversal that we had there. About here. Here. Get all that out of there. And this was the debate as do we have this as a turn? We did have a body break below it. But here's the reason why I was saying that I was disregarding these candles. This one here hasn't been validated to the upside. So all you can take is its top and its bottom. This one here hasn't been validated, validated to the downside. So you have to take its top and bottom. This one here has been validated above. Um... And we've come all the way back through it. So the mean threshold has been destroyed. And the, the rejection block of that has been taken out. So you can ignore that one. This one here uh, has been taken to the downside. And uh, we've blown all the way through it on the upside. On the rejection or the mean threshold of that one. That one's obviously no good either. This one here, we haven't broken it to the downside. So all you can take is its bottom. This one here hasn't been broken to the upside so the upside's here so all you can do is take its top this one same thing uh it's been broken to the downside but it's been worked all the way through already so that one's invalid this one here is uh hasn't been broken to the upside except for that wick there so you still take the wick above it so all we've really got is the highs and this fair value gap that's why i'm ignoring all this stuff in here it's all been worked already so there's nothing really in these candles to key off of to go down or up so i'm back to this fair value gap here that's the logic behind why those of you who are saying what how can you ignore all those candles it's kind of like cutting through the candles i think as soon as they've been worked the way they have uh to me they they don't have a lot of strength right now so you have to go back even further to find some more valid candles to to key off of so you got these i do like the highs or the lows that's pretty much all i can say is valid left of those and if we're aiming for the low, that's what we're aiming for down here anyway. So the low side doesn't really matter too much to me. The high side is more of a concern. Uh, when we get back to that fair value gap inside here or that inversion fair value gap, you have the low, the consequent encroachment and the high of that. So I have those marked out in my chart. So the low would be right here. The consequent encroachment will be here and the highs will be up there. So again, we're back to those are the only points that really matter to me inside that candle. That's why I said ignore those uh, particular levels. So that's where my my eyes are sitting right now. So if we can get back to the consequent encroachment or even the high of that thing again, if we do hit the high right there we will take out the previous day's highs and that's all totally valid for me and then 
hopefully we're going to start to see it work back down i still want to see it get down in here i think a lot of people want to see it get back down there so it's again not giving those people a chance to get on board so it's really shaking a lot of people off of the market here in the nasdaq looking at uh, es i'll come back to the four hour on this one as well es looking at four vat four hour inversion i'd like to see that come back up into here for the reversal we didn't really take on an old high though but if we can get inside here and continue down right now we've just broken this so we're really between the reversal on this side and we didn't break an old high here and a return on this side here so we have an inversion fair value gap here we're looking for it to provide a level of support uh, and this swing inversion here now that we've broken to the upside so if we come back down inside this and go higher you're looking between here and here on the four hour so it's pretty small little range to work with on that four hour chart the reversal here you didn't get a chance to get in on that none of those would work so you what do you do you go for the breaker so the last up close candle which body candle so you take the beefier one here as soon as it breaks that to the upside right there and as soon as it returns back to what breaker you continue to the upside so that's that other setup if you miss the reversal go for look for the breaker and if we have a body breaking the high look for a return back to the breaker for continuation on the upside if you're bullish you look for that key area there for it to continue to the upside We've had a nice little run here on the Dow Jones. I started catching this here yesterday before I went to bed off of this guy here, this reversal here. I caught it, but then I took it out like off this level here. I took it out here and didn't, didn't let it run all the way up. Oh, well, got a couple of pieces out of it. um so again we're looking for further dig down into here overall i'd like to see that get below these equal lows here and back, dig back into this imbalance as we've got over here on the daily before we start heading back up so this is the april i'm looking for that april dip uh, to occur in the seasonal tendencies So pushing new highs look for this gap up here and this sibby in the american dollar above market here that looks uh doable and then after that we're we've got to start reaching for this breaker mean threshold projection block and then obviously <clears throat> new highs Today could end up being just a fair value gap creation. Leave this piece open, come back, tap it, and then push up higher for higher prices again on Tuesday. If that be the case, we're looking for a return down into this daily fair value gap lower. If the American dollar continues to push higher, you want to see this stay open. But if it doesn't, it comes all the way back to this order block here or back into order block lows here look for this level here and a fill of that fair value gap sorry not it's not a fair value gap yet that uh, order block here if we start pushing through the mean threshold of this candle look for another return back into the fair value gap above you in a premium portion of that new range we've just created Look at that right back to here. Look for a, uh, I like the fact we bumped back off of this inversion here. The heck is that sound? So we've 
this inversion fair value gap look for this to stay open if it does push all the way back through and fill it that's fine sorry i have to find out what that sound is i'll be right back Sorry about that. There's somebody outside doing some work on the roads. Nice and early, 7 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Put it over there. Okay. So look for this inversion fair value gap to either. We're either going to dig into this a bit more into the mean threshold. Recapture this old low right here. And then if the American dollar continues to get stronger, it's going to push down for this. Fair value gap below you. Right now you're in between the two. So if we do get some support off of this, look for a run back down into that fair value gap below you. That's an actual fair value gap versus an inversion. So this should provide a level of support for further continuation on the downside. Canadian dollar. Wow. We're right up inside this one again here. Hmm. Oh, that's what it is. This sounds like they're drilling on the street there, but it's actually the woodpeck. You hear that sound? You know that little tin thing you have on top of your, that vent on top of your house? This woodpecker comes and he stands on top of that thing and he goes, Burr! and he hammers down on it to try and attract a mate. And that's the sound you'll occasionally hear. He hammers on this thing because he wants to get, he wants to let the girls know he's got a cool drum. So he uses our vent to drill, drum off of. So occasionally you hear that sound. That's him up there having a look around, and he, brrr, <laughs> he drills. Forgot about that. Thought this, yeah, that's him up there. <laughs> Smart though. Hey, if you're gonna get the word out, you might as well use a <laughs> use a drum. Why he uses our house? I have no idea. I haven't seen him do it in anybody else's house, but you can definitely hear from all over the the neighborhood. I uh, don't have much for the Canadian dollar other than uh, I'm keeping an eye on this area right here, this inversion that was never taken out from the upside. If we just come back into this now and continue pulling back down. Yeah. Not quite sure on that one. Right now we're between this, uh, we've run above a high here. This candle come back, find some support at this to continue down into this fair value gap here. So you're looking for more downward pressure on New Zealand dollar. And it, again, same thing. We've come back to that order block already, that breaker, because we ran these old highs out with this. So look for a continuation for the rejection block and further down into this fair value yep, below you here these are week daily candles so you can expect that to manifest over the week look at that finally hit that level i was i had marked off here we are 48.3 and the high of today is 40 Four. Four forty-four. 
the high is 454. Yeah, okay, so this has got a little ways to go yet. Got a little bit higher to go for the Japanese yen to reach that next, uh, I think it was the price leg I was looking for, a run back up into that level. So we'll see how that holds price now. And they roll over and go back down. Japanese Prime Minister was in... The states the other day so they're i would try imagine trying to negotiate some uh some way to improve the japanese yen it hasn't been doing well against the american dollar for quite a few years now oil On the one minute, we have um, we're in a consolidation here. I'd like to see more upside on oil. There's another fair value. Oh, you've already reached that fair value gap already. Don't aim too high. Let me have to do this guy here. 88.31. Have we reached 88.31? Nope. So 88.31 is my, my next upside objective. <clears throat> Downside objective would it be 83.09. So 82.62. I wouldn't want, I'd like to see this stay open as a breakaway gap. And then continue further to the upside. I wouldn't want to see it retrace back through. Even 50% of this wick here would be uh, Looks like this fair value gap's holding price. We've had multiple different hits into it. Ran through, pulled back. So I'd like to see this continue to hold price and then leave all this open would be great. And look for that 88. 31 talking about up top so run on these highs again uh, gold is kind of disconnected from the Canadian the American dollar right now it continues to climb higher making look at that all-time high right here 2430 well 2448 this is holding price at the mean threshold you like to see that start continuing to push higher now if we lose 50 percent of the wick look for higher prices 25 percent of that wick or you fib tool on that wick if you lose 25 percent of it look for a run back down into uh, this order block below you here or at least these old lows silver same kind of situation if we this isn't a valid order block yet so we have traded through this we've worked below the lows we could equal lows down here so if this 25 percent of that wick holds and we start retracing again today look for a run back down below these lows here and then back into this order block here Copper seems to be finding support so far off of this order block. Look for further upside, making new highs in copper. If we lose the downside, the mean threshold of that candle and the rejection block starts to get hit, uh, watch for your, la your line in the sand is the mean threshold of that last up close or down close candle. And then if we lose that, look for a return back into these old highs here. 
this old high here at these lows and that mean threshold of this busy and palladium is doing we're still inside that consolidation or cam one you haven't been able to get anything out of here we're stuck in a cam one cam two model stop velocity down here so you'd want to see that you managed to get above into the rejection block and we've pulled back off of it that's why rejection blocks are so critical got nothing on that one we don't know into those or not into those bitcoin bitcoin was a little choppy this weekend i have to admit it was a little choppy still provides some nice setups swing points Look for your first fair value gap after a swing point right here when the body breaks it if it returns back to it you can get long work inside the range pull your fib tool all those different methods you can use to manage that <clears throat> you have a reversal body breaks below it trades back inside it get short and you're trading back from one to the other so premium to discount Soybeans. You're already between consolidation and consolidation right now. So you want to see this candle hold price in soybeans. You're already between this candle here, this candle here right now. You want to see this one give up for continued downside if you don't want that trend to continue. You're still sideways in corn. Finally taking out this low. If this high gets taken out here inside this fair value gap and return to it, look for further upside. If not, look for continuation to take out this uh, these lows down here coffee making higher highs live cattle we still got that stepping down motion that's continuing to be validated so we're digging into this fair value gap down below here look for returning to here yeah more i see more downside with the cattle Obviously, Coke is still in a climb, and lumber is still in a decline. If you're looking for lumber decline, looking for, look, keep your eye on this gap right here, from that candle's low to this candle's high. Let's see what kind of reaction you get inside that level. If you continue to lose the downside of that one, look for this next fair value gap below you here, and old highs. Lean hogs pulling back into that gap we created on Friday. Pulling back to fill the gap, whether or not we kick off of that and start running back up again. See how this wicks today. If we blow right through it, come back, find some support at it, look for continuation on the downside. And I haven't got anything else in these guys. And with this, we shall say hello to everybody this morning. Good morning, Dave. Hans, welcome, Hans. How are you doing? Fernando. Good morning, Fernando. How are you doing this morning? Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, family. That's nice that somebody feels like your home, your family when you're here. We're here to help each other out. I like it. Lewis, good morning. Jonas, the beloved. <laughs> Jonas, the beloved. I love it. <laughs> good morning, Jonas, the beloved. 
Chris Alley, good morning. Survived my trip to Michigan with the scouts. Oh, <laughs> that's going to be a bit of a challenge. I remember doing a hypnosis session with a guy who had a, when he was, a, he was terrified of uh, the dawn, like dusk, I should say. And uh, when he went to walk, walk around in the woods, he's walking just down a creek bed or something. At dusk, he thought everything looked like a bear. Everything looked like a bear, and he was terrified that he was going to be attacked by a bear, and he didn't know why, and he obsessed over it. And this is this guy's like in his late thirties, so I was like, "Oh, okay." Well, we did some hypnosis, some some re regression work with him, and uh, I took him back to this event from uh, when he was in Scouts. He was eight years old. And uh, his dad had come out of the uh, the trees, or was standing in the trees with these red lights, and he's going, Rrr! and he says, and when he was revivified the the event, he was like terrified, and he ran to his tent, and the uncle came in, it's like it's okay, it's okay, it's just your dad, no, 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 and it was just etched in his head. And as an adult, he goes, well, I realized that was just my dad I said yeah but to that kid it's a serious thing so we had to do some child within therapy to kind of help him get through the uh, event and once he did once he got through that event dusk wasn't a problem anymore but it was kind of interesting it was all because of that camping trip they went home for their scouts so i hope you were nicer to your guys chris <laughs> than this guy was to his son that's why he thought everything was a bear and it just etched in his brain like he didn't know why at dawn he was or dusk he was everything was dark and he couldn't quite make out the figures and uh, i guess that's what it uh it's amazing how little childhood traumas like that can make a huge difference in how we act later on anyway paul good morning paul you're in michigan hello sorry good morning robin hood good morning how are you you're back are you Robin has obviously done some research out there. He's searching all the different people that are providing these live streams. And he's decided to settle, <laughs> to settle here with us today. I was looking at the uh, some of the people like uh, Tanya Trade. She's up to like 48,000 people. And uh, Hydra, two people I respect with their trading. Uh, he's over 40,000 now. So I think this is, I just love the, people are getting the word out there and they're helping people out i think it's great and we're at 653 people i love it 653 so we're not at 40,000. who cares we got 653 people here we leave no one behind we're going to help everybody out as many people as are willing to pop by uh lambo good morning carbor Jonas, the beloved. Scouter's Ranch out there. Oh, okay. Excellent. Well, you're all welcome. So, I'm going to kind of put this guy right in here. Michael still thinks that we might be getting the New York Open now. Michael still thinks we'll be working this downside of this thing. We're all kind of hoping that we're going to get down here. I do like the fact that we're turning back into this fair value gap above us here, this inversion, the swing point. If you look at how it's taken out the, uh, the high here, that creates a swing point. And when you trade a body that trades below it, and you come back into it all these levels are further continuations on the downside and yes you may have to endure a lot of this ideally you want to see something come down come back up tap inside 
one of these three levels like all the way up to here beautiful turn around smack it down give you one more opportunity to get in here or here if this was a one minute chart and you were looking at this i'd be like Ugh, i don't like this consolidation in here that can be quite sloppy and messy but nothing in here has hasn't or has happened that we wouldn't have accepted on a one minute chart and saying yeah it's a bit sloppy but we might actually we still have continuation nothing tells me this is bullish yet this still tells me it's bearish despite all this crap we've been going through here it's still inside that fair value gap look at that we still worked the lower one the consequent encroachment look how many times we tapped off of that and we haven't even hit the high one yet except for no this one here drove down validated it and we haven't come back up and hit the top one yet so if we do run all the way back up here and just clean this out, just tap above it and then roll back over and come back down, look for that key level right there. That's how I'm kind of looking at that level. And this open looks good. This would be great if it continues to work inside this invert, this little fair value yet. Sorry, this little price imbalance here. Cut all the way through it. That's why I ignore all this stuff. It's all been worked or hasn't been validated. That's why I ignore all those candles. So if you're wondering why on the Telegram channel I was ignoring the candles, I'll one, once again, I'll explain this one here has not been validated to the upside. This one here has not been validated to the downside. So you have to take the highs and the lows. That's all that's valid in that candle. So high, which is aiming for where we're looking for, and the low aiming for where we want to go anyway. This one here. Uh, it's been validated to the upside, but we've worked all the way back through the mean threshold of it, all the way through into the, the bottom half or the rejection block here. So that one's invalid. This one here is invalid because we traded all the way through it again on the upside. And this one here is not valid for the same reasons. This one here is not valid because we haven't got below it. Its high's already been taken out, so get rid of that one. This one here, this is the only one that's... Uh, uh, it's high and lower valid. We have not broken the high, so you can't validate it as an order block either. This one here is not validated because, or it is valid, but it's just been eaten through. We went all the way through it. We came back up, ate through that threshold, the mean threshold of that candle, multiple times, drove right through it, so it's no good anymore. And this one here, it's no good either because we haven't, uh, we broke that side with the wick, and the wick's a high, so. We're looking for the highs so you start eliminating all these candles that have either been worked or uh haven't been validated yet and we we come all the way back to this guy here that's why i cut through all that stuff that's why you saw me say on the telegram channel i'm ignoring all this because there's nothing in here that for me that i'd key off of so i'm back to this so i just pretend like none of this happened so i drew a line down in here saying that would be the downside and it just popped below there on the weekend uh today that's where i put my sorry i put this line here on the weekend so we just dropped below that for the entry and we're working back up in here so i ignore all this and just pretend like this is all wide open and we're coming back into that fair value gap so how we act inside here for me is more important for the overall run and if we take out the highs then that's fine I'm okay with that. I'm still, that would be the upside point. And if we break that with a body and return to it, then I'm more bullish. But until now, I'm until then, I'm still bearish inside that. That's my validation or my reason. It's not a Michaelism. It's just something for me, how I try to validate each and every candle. Which is kind of funny because when you look at this candle here, look where it stopped. Right on the mean threshold of that candle. Yeah, we, I'm, still, I'm still not using that. I'll use this guy here. So we'll see how this... We have nothing up here other than this candle right here that when the body traded below it. We traded above it here, so your stop would have been taken anyway. Trade it below it. You can't even get in on the breaker or the breaker. So you're looking for this guy here. 
Let me try to below it. Look for a return to it right there. And then the continuation on the downside. It's too discount for me. Or I'd like to get up into a premium before I get down in there. See what the opening range is, like Michael says. Uh, we'll see what the regular trading hours gap looks like. Russell, good morning. I think they change money to get what you're giving away for free. I think they charge money to get what you're giving away for free. Yeah. Is there a BB 15 minute 645 Friday? 15 minute. Let's have a look at the 15 minute here. What time? 6.15 Friday. 6.45, sorry. 6.45. 6.45. Is that a bearish break? Is that what you're calling that? Hans, is there a bearish breaker 15 minute at 6.45? That's not a bearish breaker, no. This is right here at 7.45. That one breaks this low, that little run up here. Last high candle before I run below an old low. That becomes a bearish breaker breaks to the downside we have a uh i see the swing i see what you're saying but nothing's below it uh we haven't taken out a significant low here right so you've got to think about does this is this a swing to to go higher when there's nothing really in here to validate a swing point so you have to see it take out a significant low or significant high for you to start thinking is this gonna reverse on us so you've got a low taken out here for example here's your swing point body trades above it right here you trade back into it here right there to continue to the upside pull your fib tool from here to here from there to there from there to there and there to there as you continue to climb all the way back up and if you break that on the downside now that you've taken out one swing point second swing point look for an a reversal pattern in here to key off of to come back down into that range if you're bearish does that make sense like for example here's you see this swing point here we have nothing in here that's a fair value gap so you take the first one that you can find we've taken all these lows out you break through that body breaks through it right here you return all the way back inside it right to precision right there and then you continue to the upside. That's a 15 minute candle. You run all the way to the top. You break an old high. You see your fair value gap. You see one here as well. Body breaks down to the inside, come back up. Would have taken you out there. If you wait for this one or you wait for the next time it comes down. Um, yeah, you'd have to wait for the next time it, it broke that to the downside. And it's right here. You validated back up inside it. You're sitting inside there for a long time before it finally rolled over and came back down. So if you lost it on the first attempt and you went into it again, 
I would wait for this consolidation to break down, come back up into the bottom of it, which would be a CAM Model 1 entry right there. That big candle you see right there, CAM Model 1 entry for continuation on the downside. Or the breaker, see how you make this a little bigger. And I don't know why I keep making them so small for people. So this is a breaker right here, last down close candle before running out these little ties right here. So as soon as the body breaks below it right here, and we return to it, you can get short right off of that candle. So you ran right up into it right here, bing, hit it, and then down you go. So there's a 15 minute chart. So everything we're showing you on the one minute chart is the same as what you'll see on a 15 minute chart. So hopefully that kind of helps you out a little bit there, Hans. Uh, I live west and south from from there. Yesterday, we were in Detroit all day at the football game. We were close to you. Ah, Dave. Okay. Wednesday, I'll be in New York. I'll be doing the show from New York on Wednesday. Live from New York. We're going to go down to the, my buddy and I are going to go down to the Wall Street and take a picture by the uh, the bull and the bear of Wall Street. So if anybody's in New York, we may even get to see a Tanya Trades sighting. Maybe she, because we like to see she, every once in a while she'll pop out to uh, Central Park and all that. We're not too far from Central Park. It's going to be exciting. I've never been, uh, I was in New York before 9-11. I'm going to do our paramedic studies out there. Didn't work out, so I came back to Canada, and then 9-11 happened. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, but yeah, I was I was over in Westchester. That's the furthest New York, the closest to New York I ever got. Went over to the Tappan Zee Bridge. That's it. That's the only bridge I went over from uh, one side to the other side. So now we get to finally go to Manhattan. Gonna go to Wall Street, gonna check out Lady Liberty, you know, all the typical touristy type things, and then go check out Central Park. I heard some really good food there. So I'm excited about that. And bagels are supposed to be really awesome. Pizza is supposed to be pretty awesome. Paul says, I managed to catch the reversal from the one minute inversion at 828. Maybe lucky as it went above first 828 you caught the reversal 828 oh we're on the one minute Caught the reversal coming down. Paul, good morning, Derek. Good morning, good morning. Hans, you're welcome, Hans. Hopefully that helped for you. Heard the 911 memorial is fantastic. Yeah, I've, I've got uh, a lot of love there. All those firefighters and EMS and just people in general, the rescuers that went blindly into that uh, building to try and help out. I heard some incredible stories that came out of that uh 9-11 people who were in the elevators and how they got rescued some incredible stories so uh yeah my heart goes out to those people so that memorial will be quite a uh, interesting to see what do you think about the quarterly theory by day um I don't use it. I think quarterly theory uses that. Um, I don't know. I can't give you an honest opinion because I haven't studied it. If it's not ICT, I don't study it. Which you guys could say, well, Darren, you've popped up with a couple of theories of your own. So you're saying we shouldn't listen to you either. If you like day theory, go for it. If you like something that I've proposed, then 
I try to keep it as germane to Michael as I can, but if I see something that fills a gap in my understanding that Michael hasn't filled yet, until one of you guys come up with a, an idea that I go, oh, I like your idea better. I'll take that. Like I say, I'm always willing to change my mind if I learn something new. Always willing to change my mind. Excuse me. Oh, where are we sitting? It's not a great place to be playing right now. So let's have a look at what's going on. We got 15 more minutes. See that right there? See how the, it closed right up on it? Reverse below an old low. Closed right on it, literally opened, tapped it, and then left. And you're pulling back into that range now. So if you look at the uh, fib tool, if you pull the fib tool from the high to the low there, if you did catch a reversal on this at 820 or 935, you see there's a reversal happening here. And then you went, ooh, for me, there has to be a body above it. But if you're a wicker and you you thought, well, that looks like a great place to throw 20 bucks at something. Demo money, of course. Uh, you would have caught that nice little run. So at 50%, you'd be paying yourself. And you're moving to 62%. You instantly move it up to 50. And you would have paid yourself at 62%. Got closed out at 50%. And now you're sitting off of a uh, inverse, potential inversion here. So we have a fair value gap that's filling. So if that turns into an inversion... Look for that to continue on the downside. It's not a swing above an old high, but it does create an inversion, which is a higher order for me, a higher order uh, array. So for that would be, then I'd look at this and I go, well, there's the next price leg down to continuation. So if you take that from here to here, that's the downside objective. Now that you've broken that, you see that? So if you trade back up inside this, you could get short there not that you should but just kind of look at price action here now because you're really between uh this one here which we finally popped see how the body finally traded above it we've come all the way back to the inside of it here now if we start running all the way through this again now you go bullish back up into this level here so just kind of keep an eye we're stuck between that one and that one right now there's the return to let me get this one out of your way. So you, or at least we're heading back to this level here, which strangely enough is probably the New York Open. Midnight candle. That's the next price leg now. So you, you kick off of that. Reverse hit here. We've hit here. So now you're between those two, this one and this one. So now it's got to decide, am I going to push through this and push higher? Or is this price leg actually just coming back up to fill off the mean threshold, order block, and then drive right back down again? So watch how where this closes here. I don't want to see it break more than the mean threshold of that candle there. Right now you're at the body. So this is that classic uh, reversal. Come back inside it to go along. And this one is not didn't break an old high, you see. So if this does continue pushing higher, that was... Now, if you're looking at it in terms of the level of strength of a swing, right? We talk about breakers that, you know, senior array or a breaker might be a level one breaker, level two breaker, so to speak. Like that one looks... Yeah, it's a breaker. Technically, by definition, it is but it's really not a super strong one. So we'd look at ones that are like, yeah, that's definitely once that sucker hammered all the way through all these lows here. That's a perfect, nice little breaker right there. I like that. That's a strong level breaker versus something that's just, uh, 
it's cleared out a, a swing point and you go yeah technically that's a swing point yes it did break it on the downside in terms of a versus a really significant level so i don't like the fact that we had to wake all the way up into that we're still going about to close now so where does that close quick run up into rejection block We traded below it. So almost closed right on it. Now the fact that we're retapping it again to me is there's no reason why you should be retapping that unless you're going back up higher. So now this becomes a valid order block. Now that we've broken that high with that wick. So there and all the way back into here. So see how that little tiny fair valley gap sits right there? There's a swing point right here. Again, it's a weaker one not a significant low like this it's a swing point so there's a fair value gap body trades above it right here see how you tap back into it right there and we start pushing up higher so if this was what you saw and you bought in right there you pay yourself at the rejection block old highs back up into this and you're starting to move your stop loss up accordingly That's what I mean by a weaker one versus if this dropped all the way below this, that would be a stronger swing validation versus a weaker one. And for me, you don't need, you'd be between this guy here and that guy there inside that smaller range. But because this order block pretty much fills up the whole damn thing anyway, do you want to trade it? If you're keen to trade these all the time, make sure you got a valid reason for it. And that little swing there may be your validation. I'm I'm taking it. I'm taking paying myself right there. That's fine. But if you're aiming for up there and you didn't pay yourself here and that reverses on you and comes all the way back down again and that actually becomes the next price leg down, uh, you had an opportunity whilst in a counter trend, if it's trending back down again, you counter trend traded that right back to here and you nibbled a couple of pips so if you would have got in right there on that high at 97 to the rejection block at 100 or at 11, there's 17, uh, sorry, 14 handles right there. And it was just something really quick. Calling out your, uh, your pips. So now that we've broken that to the upside, if you were short here and you saw that break to the upside right there and it come back down you'd be trailing your stop loss right in behind this guy and as soon as it popped down pop back up to the opening again that's where i get out that's my extra little rule in here so i would have taken a loss from there to there but see how that drove all the way up and i'm saying i didn't like the way they did that and then they opened and started going higher there's no reason they should be doing that unless they're going higher and then you look at this and go, oh, okay, yeah, I can see where that happened. And yes, I can see where it happened right there. It tipped its hat to me here. I saw this and was like, no, that doesn't look good. Wait a second, you missed this little piece right here. That's where it was tipping its hat for me anyway. And you're looking for a premium array. So pull your fit tool from high to low. So as soon as you get into this, you're below, you're in a discount below here. You bought in here. 50%, you move into break even. 62, come to 50. You hit 70, go to 62. It hit 70, well, it hit 75, so you go to 70 and you'd be out right there. Would have tapped you out right there. So if you're into optimum trade entries, you just hit 75% and you captured the reversal into an optimum trade entry. Now, would you buy short on this? I wouldn't. I'd wait till we see what reaction we get off this breaker and obviously wait till 10 o'clock. If it continues to the upside, then you you got to just pay yourself from here at 97 to 125. So you got 28 handles out of that. And you may not be interested in collecting 10 20 handles at a time but the opportunities are there
Good morning, Tristan. It's 928, not 828. Yeah, you got that reversal. Off of here is what you're saying. Nice one. So if you did take that reversal there and that fair value gap and it traded below it right here and came back inside it and you got short off of that and you're aiming for here and it ran all the way through. So you, the way you can manage that is once you've got this trade on, you wait for the first inversion in the opposite direction or you fib tool it and do the fib or you do the meet you do the pd arrays the third option is to manage it from the back end which is fair value gap trail your fail safe to here the moment we break that and the new one forms right here you're going to move your stop loss to above here because if it breaks it to the upside then we've got the reversal happening right here you move it to right there so if it reverses back up the other way as in right there now you own, you know you know that it's reversing to the upside so you get out there so the first reversal that happens or takes out on a close a body close to the upside you fail safe it right there in this case you would just come straight out and take your stop loss so you would have caught all this down to here if you're paying yourself here and here as well yeah uh, the rest the 80 percent that you had taken off there you paid yourself at that low or mean threat or rejection block and old low, you would have been paid a little bit more out there and 80% would have closed you out right on there. So then you wait and you go, oh, I'll get back long on that now because I've now taken that one out and I'll get long on that and I'll take myself out at 50%, 62%, whatever. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to you guys. <clears throat> Nice t-shirt. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to wear my Hawaii shirt. I bought a shirt and I thought I'm almost 60. So it's time for me to buy a Hawaii shirt. So <laughs> I got a Hawaii shirt. My dad got one. He's 80, 83. Bless his heart. He got himself a nice, my mom was dressing him up in Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> it's like, I got to be with my dad. Now I've got to get one of these shirts. So a really nice blue and yellow crazy vibrant in your in your face kind of candle or in your face kind of a shirt so here we're back to that inversion again right there see that bing hit off of it so how see how this one here we break below the close on it again come back one inside it now you may be one of those people that developed a rule over this and said if it closes on that i'm taking it as soon as it opens, I'm going to take it. Or if it, if it even pops back into that, I'll take it. And I'll put my stop loss here and go for the next one. So here's your premium array inside the small range premium to discount. So if you're short right there, you're coming back into here. You catch that again for you caught one run up, paid yourself to 75% and it reversed on you. Don't you love paying yourself at 75% optimum trade entry and you got it perfectly. Then it came back and said, hey, look, I'll give you one more opportunity to get on there again. I'll even give you an opportunity to catch it on the way back down to this swing point. You caught it. Now, do we come back up into this fair value gap above you here? And do we re you retest between here and here now? so right now i'd be like ping and i put my stop loss right up break even with that just because we're in a tight range and we may not revisit that if you do bonus look for this guy here so grab your tana handles move to the sidelines i wouldn't want to see it come back down into that wick so i would slam that right up against that thing right there so i'd be in profit right now so you're saying why aren't you here's 10 o'clock because if this reverses and continues back down again, I'd like to see it come back, give you one opportunity to get in here. What we need, my friends, is our beloved carrot. See that? As soon as you put it on there, it's a hungry, hungry algo. Mm -hmm.
You guys are going to think there's something with that carrot, I tell you. <laughs> and right to the nibble. Look at that. Hungry, hungry algo. It loves its carrots. <laughs> All right, so that'll be it. So you be out at that point right there. I move my little carrot to the sidelines here and wait. So I'd like to see that push higher through this. But if it doesn't, that's it. That's the high right there. So if you're short there, because you've taken out this high, if you're short there and that closes above you, use your fair value or your uh, fail safe to get you out. Chances are it's so close, it's probably going to take you out if it runs through. This is when you go, I don't want to see it run back up and there's no reason. There's no order block above me here that needs to validate off of. You've got the rejection block, sure. But, you know, you already threw the mean threshold of that candle. That will be the right there. I'm either in and it's going to leave on me or the moment it starts coming back up above that high, get out. Just because there's nothing above here other than this big pocket that says, hey, that looks like a great place to go. So you have one opportunity on a little swing to go high above here and here to 75%. Came all the way back, said, here, I'll give you one more opportunity to play. This is that buffer thing I was telling you guys about. You're buffering anything that slams against you here. Because if you're counter-trending this and the trend for the day is biasly low, then you better be counter-trending. You better be uh, buffering the crap out of this and make sure your stop loss is tight because as you're collecting at these rejection blocks like this every single time, and you're pocketing some cash and you're coming back to these little crazy weak little swing points that you're going to collect, collect, collect. So if it does turn against you, you're going to uh, like right here. You see how this is now broken that high. Watch this. So your eyes already go in here and you're going, if this swing below takes this out, comes back, hits that, I'm going short. And I'm going to blow through these uh, people who are putting these stupid trend lines in here right now. forget the trend lines people trend lines it's all bs it really is you can read price action better than a stupid trend line and i know it's popular i know it's contrary to what a lot of people think and if you use them and they work for you then you'll just ignore me you'll say what does he know okay stick with what you know Stick with what works for you. So you don't want to see this break to the downside. Otherwise, if it comes back up, look for that as the potential swing. But I look at that see, yeah, they're still open there. I want to see that stay open now. Continue pushing up for this breaker. Eight fifty breaker. 850 breaker he says 850 breaker 850 breaker mm -hmm. yeah there's going to be a bunch of those there's going to be one here for a run above that high this one here running above that high this one here running below that low they're all kind of overlapping when you're in these consolidations like this and you get these little pop-ups above. Yes, technically that validates it as a breaker, but you're inside that range right there. Fair value gap looks good. The mean threshold of that. If you pull the, the fib tool on this mean threshold here, watch how we can see why those things become so important. 50%. See how that just hits that nicely. The bodies are respecting it. The wicks, little mohawks above, and then slamo. See how we broke this to the downside now? That's why you pay yourself at these points. So if you're on the wrong side, and I was telling telling you how to buffer this, you're buffering this all the way up and you haven't taken a loss. You slam the sucker up and you chase that up and you start paying yourself at these points. There's 10. I think those took 20 handles there we had out of that one. You can catch that one on the way back down, which is probably another 10 or more handles. You catch this one, another reversal again, all the way back up to here from that perfect entry there at 95 to here at 
20, there's 27 handles just to the rejection block so you've got 20 30 50 you got 50 handles just out of this alone here's your reversal again we broke a body below it i like the premium portion of that do the Derek trade here get yourself a premium if you're going to go for a discount wait see how it's coming back inside this one again do you have a fourth opportunity to go along here one two well, it'll be a third opportunity so again if a body breaks below that low look for continuation so you're between here and here that swing high this swing low swing for the high this is the swing for the for the low now so wait for it to come all the way back up here you got equal highs and you got a fair value gap so keep that in mind up there so if this is the third attempt to go higher and it finally takes these out again you pay yourself that breaker fair value gap all the stuff in here you'd be paying yourself at we've got a breaker right here so you've trade if you miss this opportunity you trade below it come back up inside the breaker and continue short now we've got a body that trades below it so here's where you go if i miss this opportunity because i see a body break below that and it doesn't give me an opportunity to get in i look i'll go down the trend or the line here the range and i go where's the breaker that is the breaker last down close candle before running above an old high so as soon as you get a body break below that right there it trades back up into it right there you get short and you're aiming for your first pop right there and then we've got this swing point right here again see how we come all the way back down into here so now you're looking for discount premium if we do get in this consolidation again you look for this guy here and that guy right there if we blow through this on a close, then you say I'm going to continue on the downside. So if you didn't get in there, that's the backup for a continuation if you're bearish. And that is your overall trend. I still believe we're going down here. And, uh, yeah. That is that, my friends. There you go. See how the body broke down below it? And you came back up into it perfectly right there. You can't ask for better price action than that. Body breaks down below this and says, hey, look, I'm still going. I'll give you one more chance to get on short now. Ba-boom. So you've had like multiple entries. You had all this. You got to collect 50 handles at least inside this range here. And you catch that reversal right there. <coughs> you wouldn't even have to worry about buffering. All that buffering stuff's now in your pocket because you caught the trend, the reversal. It tipped its hat to you right there, gave you one opportunity to get on right there to go short. And it said, hey, look, I'm still short. Guess what? OK, I'll give you one opportunity to get on here. Aim for your first objectives down there. Hopefully you see that. And it's not like I wasn't hindsighting that. That was live candle by candle validation. <laughs> Sorry, you don't want to see people blowing their nose. <laughs> Did anybody catch that? Go for the run. Ten oh four silver bullet. Ten oh four silver bullet right there. Short. And it's a silver bullet too. How's that? How beautiful was that? Do you catch the silver bullet? It was right off the breaker too. Right back to regular trading hours. Sorry, the uh, opening range gap. Sorry, New York Open. 
So now you want to see this just hammer through this now. I want to see this just drive all the way through here for the rest of the day. Didn't quite get my mean threshold of my fair value gap, but we did get the low. So that's why you, I, I'm glad now I've ignored all this stuff. If it rips all the way back through me, that will really throw me off. But uh, that's why I ignored all that stuff there. But so far, it's panning out. ICT's throwing up photos. Holy cow. <clears throat> Whoever's in a silver bullet now, you guys are killing it. So just manage that on the downside now with your fail safe. If you have a fail safe, if not, I don't manage it whatever way you, you so choose, but I'm looking for that sucker to run all the way down now. So what do we got over here? Let's look for a five minute, manage this on a five minute chart now. See how this reversal doesn't get validated to the upside. You don't even get the breaker there. We come back inside this consolidation right here. Yeah, model one entry. What have we got down here? Let's go to a 15 minute. So we have no regular trading hour gap there. It's taking these lows right there. Keep this one right here in mind. Oh, it's already in it. Wow. Okay. So see this reversal right here on the 15 minute time frame. If you look at this as the swing point, we've taken out this low here. We've swung below it. We wait for a body to trade above here on the 15 minute and it's right there see that body trades above it then it comes all the way back inside it right here and then proceeds to run all the way back up into pull your fib pull your fib pull your fib all the way back up into this fair value gap here through this order block breaker went all the way through it just cleaned out the high of it back into the fair value gap and then we have a little reversal right here body trades below it right there wow really tight look at the close on this candle right here and that is 307 high on this candle 308 so this one closed below here you pop up inside it, no bodies close above it, and then slam on. You're starting to run, run all the way back down to discount array. So premium, discount. And right there, you would have caught that hole. It would have been underwater that much there. 
and you would have caught that entire run from 13, 313 to the high of this one here is three, and so 113 handles in 15 minutes. Literally from there to there. Crazy accurate fun. I'll tell you if you see it. If you know what to look for, and you trade inside those ranges, to look for one and the one that created it on the upside, and the one that creates it on the downside. Trade from one to the other, like array to like array, premium to discount, or pull your fib tool and manage it down on your fib tool if you want. But to me, that's a terminus here. like this candle here. Equal lows. This would be great for the next price leg down. If we just came up, tap that old low there, and I don't want to see it come back up through that again. I want to see that just take off, and this all remains open now. We have a, a swing point here. So if you're coming back into that range, <coughs> and that body's now traded above that candle swing, Come back into here. So if we if we close below here to continue down, that becomes a fair value gap. Now it becomes inversion. This one here has already become inversion, so it's the senior one inside this range to go higher. You've hit an old low here. That's a upside objective, so that might even be 50% of that range. Pull the fib tool from there to there. Yeah, that's 50% of the range already. So if it rolls over and comes back down now, this would be a great opportunity to go continuation on the downside. ICT's cranking out pictures like crazy. Man, he's look, cranking out tons of stuff this morning. I love what he's saying. You're feeling anxious and you're missing, you're feeling uncomfortable about missing that move. Dismiss those thoughts. That's what a gambler feels. <laughs> I love it. Remain calm. If you caught the silver bullet entry this morning, you caught a beautiful entry and a logical place to catch an entry. 
you not only got the silver bullet, you got the breaker, you got the swing point, you got the return into the swing. Oh no, you didn't get the return of the swing. You just caught the second validation of the swing of the breaker inside that silver bullet entry. And you caught all of this on the way down. Now this return here, did it shake you guys off? Or did it just return to a order, a level of order block here or an old low? And then continue pushing down for the next price leg down. See how the body's broken that now? That's a better sign. And see how it's breaking this right here, saying, guess what? I'm going to, unfortunately, closed right on it. So we could just get a wick into here. So we'll see where this closes up right now. You want to see that blow right through here and just keep pushing. Get right through the mean threshold of that candle. Keep pushing down. And I'm looking at this as the next price leg down. So that would be from there to there. Let's pull this from here. Downside objective, 18 to 125. Note it correctly, volume and balance included. Let's go back over what Michael's talking about there later. I'm just going to stick with what I got right now. I caught that short again. Good for you, Paul. Good for you. Great trade action today for change. I got out too early. Ah, that's a good question to ask yourself. Did you get out too early? Are you at, basing that on the, what the price is doing now? Or did you get out at a logical place where you said, I'm going to pay myself here? Because if you panicked, exited. <laughs> So if you got out of that trade going, I got out because I panicked. I didn't, I've been lucky twice today. So the luck factor is kicking into my head instead of logic factor. Then uh, journal that, Paul. Because if, uh, when you say I got out too early, I, to me, I hear a bunch of judgment on that based on what's happening now. You're judging your decision you made earlier. Now go back and say the decision I made earlier. Was that the... A logical decision did i logically get out there because i wanted to get out there or did i panic when i got out there because if i am then i need to reevaluate my trading strategy for how i how i get around um two consecutive wins do i start to get that oh you're being too lucky now the thoughts are popping into my head like oh you can't be lucky too many times you're going to take a hit instead of going look man i'm just trading my my plan and it's working I'm still biased to that weekly sell side. Then once it's taken, I'm bullish. Ooh. That's a lot to put to hang on a weekly candle. I have to get that sell side liquidity gets taken. I'm I'm totally with you. <clears throat> I saw your um charts there, Anthony. I thought they're they're perfect. That's exactly what I would have done. I like the way you uh, described them. They made a lot of sense. I think if we run this out here for the April low this week, if we take this out here and get a reaction off of this low, this fair value gap here, <clears throat> I'd want to see uh, this mean threshold no lower than the mean threshold if it does continue down below that mean threshold we're running for this candle you start breaking the wicks up inside or sorry break the wick up into quarters then you have this mean threshold of that candle and if you lose that then obviously we've got the same thing all over again here down here and here so if we get a super dig, big deep dig down here now let's say that war breaks out and we see a big plummet down look for these areas here to fill 
we don't know that for sure all i do is trade the alg trade the arrays that you see that's it just trade the arrays that you see because this could just turn around and start banging around in here some more for another few days i still think uh tomorrow is the uh the big day So you should see. Maybe tomorrow's the, uh, today's the day it takes it out. And then tomorrow's the one that just pushes. So tomorrow pops down one more time into the wick to clean this up, making Tuesday low. And then we'll start running back up into the rest of the week. Those are all guesses. I don't know. We'll just trade to get what we're in right now. And we'll know when it changes direction because it'll give us an indication. It'll say, hey, guess what? I'm going this way. All based on those little tiny turns like that. Hey, guess what? I'm going south. I'll give you an opportunity to get in on the breaker. Hey, guess what? I'm going north. And I may change my mind. Get ready for me to change my mind. I change my mind. Coming back inside here. Guess what? I'm changing my mind. I'm going back up. Guess what? I'm changing my mind. I'm going back down. <clears throat> you're staying on the horse. And you're catching all these reversals. And you're running to the next logical place to pay yourself at. You're not trying to drive for the big daily candle. If that manifests itself off of a silver bullet when you first started the day, then great. If you're still in that, then you're doing fine. Carry on, folks. Carry on. I hope you guys are still in that, Paul. I hope you're still in your uh, silver bullet. I think you said you got out, didn't you? Call it short at 18,260. Oh, he caught it right off the low. Atta boy. Way to go, Russell. Nice job, Russell. Good call. Look at the equal lows of the one hour. The equal lows of the one hour. Let's look for the one hour. Let's have a look here. Look at this deliciousness here. Ooh. We just did, you did clean it out right there with that little pop down below it, but Yeah, I want to see this run through this order block down here now because here's your, uh, what have we got? Nothing significant. We just got order blocks to come back to. We have a fair value gap. You want to see that get through. We're entered into that fair value gap again. So this is a reclaimed fair value gap. It's not an inversion. It's just a reclaimed fair value gap. We keep reclaiming it, reclaiming it. And now I want to see this pop through there, find a level of support here on the hourly. <clears throat> So you get to see what I'm talking about right there. And I want to see it get through that. So we go hourly, fair value, yep. Dig in, get through it, come back, find a level of support on that for your hourly, and then continue pushing through. Right? You want to see that push through here. The mean threshold next is this candle here. You want to see that this this little guy here you want to see that get and this one here get taken out which pretty much aligns with this one here pretty close uh and then start running for the rejection blocks and obviously the all this down here that's just candy land but you may just see this just pop below that like it's just done retrace all the way back up and start digging into this order block here that mean threshold right there, not quite. You did close above it. We ran the highs, got into the fair value gap. Yeah, you got into that 50% of that retracement. I like that. Yeah, I see your equal lows there, Anthony, but I see these equal lows down here, down here. There's a lot down there. I want to see this become the next fair route, this next little uh, price action. 
leg from here to here. If that is it right there, look for here. Where is 17,961? So let's look at that on the daily. 17,961. Look at that. It brings us right to the fill of that fair value gap right there with just a couple of pips to spare. Interesting, perhaps. You likey likey the idea? But if that's the next price leg down, look for that as your downside. In other words, we're looking for a fill of that fair value gap. Now, on the hourlies, now that may take 24 hours to get down there for the Tuesday low. Um, but anyway, that would be uh, where I'm looking at for that next price leg down on the hourly chart. Let's get back into here. And let's close that out. It's a 15 minute. This one will turn into an hourly. So we get a, a bit of a feel. Was this a Sunday candle? Oh, let me go for a Sunday candle. Where is the Sunday candle? Right there. It's a Sunday open. Eighteen one forty nine. Mean threshold holds price. In between here and here, watch that we don't break above that price right there. This is that buffering thing again. It's not a, a reversal up higher, but it is a we reversed off this here. Downside, come back up, pay yourself here at the rejection block. You come back up again, perfect entry here. And you're inside this range right here. So if you're inside that range, that's why I say you better be uh, pulling your fit tool. And uh, if you're off this one here, template retracement, there's your 50%. So if you got in here, you pay yourself at 50, 62, you're just paying yourself all the way down. You're in a consolidation right now. This is how you trade the consolidation. You trade it from the premium to the discount. So your premium, you caught perfect entry here, 50. You paid yourself, moved yourself to break even. And then hit six, that went up, came down, hit 60%, moved to 50. It hit 70, 70, it hit 78. So you would have been out at 75 right there. So you would have paid yourself from perfect entry at two. 49 all the way down to you have 30 handles there see how you can even in the wrong direction even if it's, you're counter trending this thing you can still catch some uh, reversals still catch yourself man it's even in a consolidation that's how you trade consolidations using your fib tool 
pay yourself at rejection blocks pay yourself at the discount array you're really between this candle here and this candle here that little inversion right there and this big inversion here so how they're overlapping inside that bigger range so you went all the way to the top see how it broke down here got into the mean threshold of that candle got back up give you one opportunity to get in pay yourself at the rejection block come back up you get another opportunity to get in one two or three you take all of those pay yourself at the mean threshold or the 75 percent or whatever or rejection block again Hopefully that makes sense. After read all what Michael's done, he's been cranking out tons of uh, <laughs> tons of messages here. Paul says I got up at the equals equal lows was my take profit well if you've got out at a logical place paul uh you made some cash you're doing good don't beat yourself up for getting out too soon because that you're just judging yourself based on what's happening now take it out there that's fine move to the sidelines we're in a consolidation right now if you're clipping coupons inside this consolidation because you know what you're looking for good for you like you're doing great see you're literally between there entry and here you're just like boop you're like where am i gonna go now you're actually between this one here too they're all overlapping so this thing's got to break out of here or here it's got to get through the mean threshold of that candle and start trading above or it's got to roll over through this mean threshold of this candle and start pushing down so you wait 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 it's got to bust out of here it's compressing right now so you gotta wait for it to do something meanwhile back at the ranch there's a musical interlude do 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 i got a nice live one of these on uh yeah i'm in this little yam here yammy yam already caught this little rundown so it's always looking good yams responding way nicer than uh nasdaq i'm in on a live trade on that yam yam dow jones see how it's making lower lows see it's taking out these lows here and es is not taking out those lows yet it's still making higher lows that's your SMT thing, you people. See how this is making it, taking out its lows now? ES, YAM, or Dow. And this guy's finally coming down now. So which one do you take? So there, there's an SM, there was an SMT divergence there. And now this is finally catching up. Yes. Dow. Now they're back in sync again. Well, um, yeah, I guess they're taking it. That guy's taking it slow. Up. Was there an SMT prior to the silver bullet? Okay, I'm going to try working on this damn SMT thing. Because you guys keep talking about it so much. So I'm going to try and... There's the nine. There's the silver bullet. It just caught one here. So that one is uh, a higher high. Yami. What did Yami do at 10.04? No, <clears throat> it made a lower lower high. And NQ made a lower high. Oh, sorry. Made a higher high. So Yam was the weaker one. Or sorry, the Dow was the weaker one out of the two. 
Okay. So if it's the weaker one out of the two, silver bullet entry at 10.04, 10.05, right there, there's your silver bullet. Yes, so to answer your question, Usman, uh, there was. Two were up, one was down. So that means take the, the down one because it's the weaker one out of the bunch. It can't keep up with the rest of them. It's already given way. Take the short one for your bias short, if we're overall bias short. You all agree? Disagree? Did I catch that right? Did I understand that right? <laughs> it's hard to say which one of the three you would take then. So if, if the weaker one, if your bias is short, you take the weaker one out of the two who's given up the ghost early and you jump on that one that's the one i'm on anyway not that it makes my s i didn't do that based on an smt though one hour low on april 10th there's liquidity to the left on april 10th on the one hour April 10th on the one hour, he says, right down here. Yeah, there's, you got these equal lows here on the one hour. <clears throat> Yesterday, or on Friday, you got this low, you got lots of lows here. I'm not even looking at that area right now. I want to see it get through here first. If it gets through there on a close on the hourly and comes back up, then I'd start saying, yep, yeah, that's viable. Then you look for a rejection block because <clears throat> this could be one of those classic this scenarios, right? Where it comes down into the rejection block, does not take out the whole lot, and then just runs all the way back up again. Then it comes all the way down to the rejection block and then starts running all the way back up into the range again. So don't go counting on these lows just yet, Anthony, until you get confirmation that you've, you've taken out that mean threshold there with a nice bold candle, come back up to it and then start pushing through. Like I'd be more, more likely to look for these lows once we get below here on the close and come back into it. Then I'd say, what's my next target? My next target so that's order blocks, mean threshold, rejection block, then, then for the lows. I wouldn't even be aiming, aiming for here right now until I get confirmation here which come which is coming in this hour so you've still got 15 more minutes so if you see this in close in 15 minutes come back up find support of that then i'm targeting these guys here <clears throat> but i'm willing to say that it may just come down to the rejection block again and pull all the way back into the range and take this breaker because that that would make a breaker if you take this low out and stay inside that rejection block then you run all the way back up into that breaker again and then come back down like you're not just going to get these slams Slam dunks. <clears throat> Michael's on his, uh, if you're on Michael's um, private mentorship, uh, channel which is in telegram <clears throat> if you weren't invited and part of the uh, if you did his mentorship back in the day and uh, you got invited over into the uh, telegram channel then uh, that's where he's posting and I'm not posting what he's posting there in here that's for people who have paid they are the paid mentorship people, so I will not be posting what he's got there. And I won't be reading it, too. Unless he's given some psychological advice, I think it would help you guys out. <clears throat> so, Chris, if you're on this Telegram, if you're a previous member of uh, ICT's... Uh, mentorships charter member or whatever you'll find them if you got the invite you'll find it posting it there yeah mm-hmm 
Mm -hmm. Watch here. We start letting that sucker go and it comes back up underneath that on your hourly. Those of you who are hourly candle fans. That's this guy here. Oh, there's the regular trading hour gap right there. Do we trade all the way back up inside that? No, we didn't. Hold on to your shorts, people. <clears throat> He's about to let go. Oh, you just found them last year. Ah, okay, gotcha. Yeah, study, study, study his stuff. I tell you, there's nothing else out there that is uh, holding a candle to his stuff. I'd like it for him to win the Robins Cup this year, but if he doesn't, I don't care. I don't care. I think it was just, it's a, like the, the final nail in the coffin for me. I think all those people who were, who didn't believe that ICT stuff was, was valid and the, uh, it'll finally shut up all those, uh, those people out there that have been dissing him for all these years. I think for me, it would be good validation for him and not only for the students that uh, don't have as big a voice as he does about this stuff. It does, it <clears throat> kind of speaks for all of us as well. So there's a, a significant amount of pressure there for him. But I understand. It doesn't To me, it doesn't matter if he, if he wins, he does or he doesn't. I don't care. If you can't see that this is price action we're staying on price action and hasn't flipped us off the horse here we're still staying tight with price action on a one minute candle and we're catching these little reversals and you're even catching pips or handles out of this in a counter trend even when it counter trends against you you can still snap 10 handles out of that Oh, he's posting a song now. My internal dialogue song. How long have you been trading for, Chris? The macro begins. Overall, about three years making money. About six months. Good for you. You know, if you're making money for the last six months and you've been doing this for three years, good for you, man. That's that's quick. That's fast learning. So those of you who are just starting out with this thing, three years, two years a minimum is the standard to start comprehending this stuff. And then, uh, so if, if Chris, if you're hauling money out of this thing already after, uh, three years, then wow, you're doing great. I have all these equal lows down here. So reading this right now, tell me where you would be looking for, uh, a reversal. Give me the minute candle where you're looking for a reversal and start planning inside your mind where could this reversal happen where could it go to uh when would i start to go bullish again 
that we're we're not going to run see how that one hour fair value gap is bouncing 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 multiple times off the bottom of that fair value gap but we haven't driven through it yet so this is the bottom of it here making or are we engineering liquidity here between lows and this big pocket of cash up here how are we going to get to that what would be a valid place for you to go to get that Yeah, consistency will come with discipline. You're, uh, I totally agree with you, Chris. Your consistency, consistency, and and it's really being in these charts. As far as I'm concerned, you have to be <clears throat> studying price action as intensely as this to really get a feel of what where each candle is going, where you want it to go, what you're expecting it to key off of, and how you want it to just where it would fail. Right there. Uh, it's saying to you i'm going down <clears throat> right there see it came back give you one little tiny opportunity to go short right there fair value gap old low are you paying yourself real quick from there to there <laughs> i don't know up to you see how this we've taken out this little swing point here and this one we've taken out the swing point here that one ran up the rejection block this one here ran down to rejection block. It literally happens and goes here. So like array to like array inside a consolidation. Big candles. So they're literally overlapping arrays. You see that that one there to go up. This one here to go down. So you just popped below that one. You're popping up inside. You don't want to see it run above that old high now. I want to see this start pushing through here and taking out these lows. <clears throat> if it runs back up in here again. Your upside would be, do we break this candle here on the upside again? Come back, find support at it to run to this piece here. So you're going to go from here to here now. We're going to start to compress. Which is pretty much the mean threshold of that candle to these, uh, this old candle here. It's not a breaker yet till we break that low. So you get one opportunity right there two opportunities your min, mean point to continue going short right there and mr dow is not quite making this guy's making lower lows before the dow is ah interesting now dow's popped down not like this though dow's really resisting this And you, once you see this enough times, you guys, you're going to start to trust whether or not, okay, now, did you guys trust that that was going down for here when you saw that little tiny pop down below that? Did you? Or you go, no, 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 that's, you can't prove that. And yet it does. Right? This one here, it ran all the way back up into rejection. You didn't get a chance to get on that. I don't know what the five second chart or 30 second chart would have given you. But it ran to an objective you would have liked to have got in on and got out at. So then it creates this, so it creates a swing. So you go, oh, okay, so as it's creating a swing, you look for this uh, fair value gap here. You go, well, if it breaks it to the downside, I'm going short. And it just did right there. Good. I will load one here, one here, and one here. You get one short there, and you get one short at the mean threshold. And you've already started paying yourself here. Move yourself to break even, whatever you want to do, and continue on. And the Dow still has not made a, a significant lower low yet. What's this? This has made lower lows. This has made lower lows. And Dow is, yeah, I guess it's, you could say it's making lower lows. But it, see how it's, yeah, I guess you could say they're all making lower lows. This one's a little more significant.
see this so as it's starting to form it you see i've taken this low out right and you go now am i going to break through this find some support of this and start running back up into this one so we've got this one here and this one here swing point so you have to see how the dow was kind of holding him back and yet this uh this one here just coming back into that candle there i like that it ran above its own candle so that would be a swing point there it broke itself above that came back found support at it now push start coming back down that comes back inside the breaker now i'm going to push through No body breaking that high yet. Hmm. Body breaks above it. So now I'm looking for this to run a little higher now. Look at the range you're in and look for a return back at above here now. So now you've swept this low. <clears throat> Body breaks above it, comes back down, doesn't quite tap it. And hasn't quite hit that one there yet. So look for 50% of the range. This breaker here. Now if you're looking at it from this, because that loan's lower than that one. Not a super strong one inside of consolidation. Yeah, now we got a full fill on that. And we'll see this continue up to the upside now. That was 50% right there of that range. So it's a legitimate place for it to now continue on the downside. I want to see this break. If it breaks down below that, comes back up, finds some support at it, then you're bearish again. And all that was was just a return to 50% inside the breaker. Not quite back to that fair value yet, though. That inversion. Still might get it. We'll see what happens here. Watch where that closes now. Because we get this really tight little range here, right? So we've got six seconds left. Wick down to the order block. Snap it up. Nope. Okay, good. So now here's your linchpin. Do we get support off that? Continue back down. So far, you, I'm bearish now. <clears throat> if we pop above that, then you go bullish. But bearish. See how you had a body pop above it? Okay, we're going long. Well, to 50%. Came back down, dropped below it, and said, okay, now I'm going short. Rejection block. So that's not form fitting that. That's actually algorithm said I only need to go back to 50%. I don't need to reach that. I just need to come back to 50%, which is a discount, and then continue down. And I tip my hat to you right here, give you another opportunity to go short when I show you that I'm actually a Oh, yeah, we're getting for that. Oof. So we're hitting 11 o'clock, right? So there's typically from high to low, we have a reversal that occurs and we look for 50 to 62% of the range. So we may get a pump all the way back down into now. Finally, they're finally giving up the ghost now. Dow's finally uh, breaking its low. Dow's doing this one here. finally giving it up if we
we do get a retracement in the so now that we've swept below this low look again so as soon as every time it takes out a little low look for that fair value gap and say are we just getting a reversal starting to happen here and we're going to start to run back into 75 or 50 to 62 percent of the range it was created from the 930 open or the 830 open or 930 i think it is up here to uh 11 o'clock This is typically the time you'll start to see a reversal back into the range. <clears throat> and where would 60? Down by here. You guys don't need to hear me clear my throat every five seconds. Let's take this here. Sixty-two percent puts us right back into this order block here. Watch. This is the range that we're there. You see how we've broken this swing point here, and you're tapping on it right here. I'm just going to go one long there. So they kind of counter trending this now, and if it trades below that candle there on a the close stop loss will go right here if it trades below that low on a close and comes back into it I'll get out before my stop loss gets taken or it just rips right through and takes me out <clears throat> so we have a reversal happening at a time 11 o'clock we're expecting a reversal back into this range here so we'll see if it happens i'm just trading time price and expectations of a retracement at this time of day pay yourself there i only got one on so i'm gonna have to chase this so looking for the range here Pull your fib tool from here to here. Fifty percent. Move myself to break even. Follow the rules. Let's get this one out of here. <clears throat> get sixty-two percent out of that. Where's my, where's my stop loss? Dang you. I hit my stop loss underneath there. I can't get at it. Oh, well. Take some money out of there. Anyway, you get my point. <laughs> so if it gets to 62, I don't know how I could have got that stop loss out of there. I don't understand trading 100% in terms of... <clears throat> working my trades but anyway this you get the point so we're in here i move i move to break even so it's a zero stress trade right there right so if it's a 62 percent right now then you move to 50 and or do this you start looking for the the breaker up top here that ran these lows and you look for that to be your uh pd array that you're looking for you're looking for this fair value gap to return to up here So if that came in and take me out right there, you paid yourself here, you pay yourself at that high. If it reverses, it comes back on you, you buffered some of the loss there. I think this is still coming up higher. We've got this guy here. That's a premium array, discount array, like array to like array. You'll hear me say that many times. So if at 50%, we were at break even, 62 moves us to 50. I'll leave that on there just in case it, it runs. And there, you've just hit the edge of it right there. So that's what that would be at your out right there from like array to like array. 
then you may go, no, I want to go higher. That's fine. Then move yourself to break even. And if it comes back and takes you out, we'll say we played inside a fair value, inside our little small little range, and uh, we didn't lose anything. And remember, oh, sorry, this is just demo money, folks. We're just playing. You're just studying price action. That's all you're doing. Fernando, yes, patience, my friend, patience. So now we've run this old high out here now. Just a little run out on the high. I'm expecting a pullback into this range here at 11 o'clock. But if we don't, then, uh, and it continues down, that's a much stronger indication for me that we're re we're going to retrace into uh, those low, take those lows out. <clears throat> Watch this area right here that gives way on the downside. You'll be glad you paid yourself up there. See, my stop loss would have been taken. Did you pay yourself there? I think it was like 175 bucks or something like that. See how we drop below it now? Now you go short. And if it trades above here on a close, well, you have to give it that piece there, I suppose. <clears throat> You're in consolidation here now. I bought it at a, I bought it at a discount. I should have waited for a, a premium, but I bought it right off that low. Stop loss go right here. Equal highs, low you going, oh, that's equal highs. Okay, watch, now it traded above it, so you got to get out. Oh, get out. That's how it traded above it. Now you wait for it to come back down. It didn't. It just popped down, ran back up again, so I get out right there. That's my rule for right that candle, what it just did right there, I'm out. If it popped, came down, and came back to that entrance, I'm out, because we're looking for a higher price. I may not get my full retracement back into that guy there. So had I waited all the way to there, it would have been a small, much smaller loss, but I took it right at the bottom. That's the difference between taking your losses here and up there, and you're in a consolidation. So anyway, I'm not playing in the consolidation anymore. I'm looking for more, something more feasible. Let's just, I just want to kind of show you some price action in there, and wherein the fail safe saves you and so on and so forth. So now if it drops below here again, comes back up, you're really between this candle here and that candle there right now. We've just come back up to the top, the bottom of that candle right there. Now you're looking for this one here. You want to see that trade below. So you're looking like array to like array. You want to see that dig right through this and start getting more so when i'm looking at this in terms of who's who's going to win where are we at are they going from like array to like array constantly and they're going like array now if they go to like array that's on a downside like the bottom of a high candle and they start going chunking through array on the downside then i go to me that's strong that's weaker and if it's the reverse and you hit the top of this candle here and the middle of that candle i go that's stronger so I look at those arrays and I go, which one is it like to like? So if it goes from that low to that high and stays inside there, I go, okay, they're really undecided. But if they go from the bottom, which you saw right there, through to the midpoint of this candle, I just go, oh, okay, this one's, to me, it feels weaker inside the range. And maybe I'm just overreacting, but watch and see. We just tap the bottom of it. Now, if this is weaker, it should roll through. See how we we came down and the bodies respected that piece right there, but the wick started digging into it. We're back up here. So you'd expect a body to a body.
here's the body ah, okay pop through now we're at the rejection block this is how i kind of obsess over each candle and as they bounce around on there what they mean so we ran all the way through the rejection the mean threshold of that candle and popped right onto the rejection block came back down on top of this candle here and then we're pushing higher so what i thought was potentially weaker is actually just dug down into this array here uh, which is the rejection block again in here see it tapped it rejection to rejection discount that's in the discount range there so we're in this small this candle's overlapping this one you got up to there you know you're stuck in this candle here now you either got to run higher or run lower that one's not valid that one's not valid that one we've already been eating through it so you're either taking the highs or you're going to slam it all the way back through here Lori, how you doing, buddy? Um, I think ICT has mentioned that the reversal, there's a reversal that occurs around that time. You'll have to go to the ICT uh, index and look for the uh, confirmation of that. Hey, Laurie, I hope you're doing well, man. You caught the short at 10.16. Good, man. At 10.16. You caught that off of there as well. You caught that low. Good for you, man. <laughs> That's excellent. Constantly looking at the one minute will drive you nuts. That depends, I suppose. <laughs> Unless you get excited about it and you say, I'm studying how price action, if you work at the one minute, Anthony, here on the uh, price action on the one minute, you'll understand all those other ones that don't drive you nuts. The the uh, hour long candles, all that kind of stuff. Because it's fractal. So what you see here and what you understand here at what candle goes where it goes, like I'm, you see me going kind of, ah, like, you know, when it's just tapping this I'm, and it's looking for this piece, I'm looking for that little piece there and that little piece there. You guys may just think that's nuts, but me, that's for the, for me, that's how I study price. I just look for individual arrays and I look for confirmation constantly from one candle to the next. And I constantly reference it in terms of the range. And this is the best place to practice this because if this was a daily chart right now and it was looking like this, you'd be like, I have no idea where it's going. But if you're practicing this on a one minute chart, you start to get a little better at reading where you think it's going to react to. Right. Or you just go, I'm not touching this. That's a weekly chart. I wouldn't touch this. So you're looking for you go down to the lower time frames and you find, can I get. If I'm in this premium portion up here and I just hit off a rejection block and I'm expecting a consolidation in the daily to retrace back down to a rejection block on the lower side, then I'm looking for the next couple of days for this to run back down into a rejection. You see what I'm saying? Like this is a one minute. It's the same thing on all time frames, all time frames. And if you, even if you're wrong, and you just caught that rejection block there and you say okay it's pulled back in again then if i can expect this to roll over and come back down to the like array down in here the next three days i'm catching this for a run down into 
rejection block here or at least this order block so you're starting to scale out you're you're using your fail safe to track yourself on the way down and that may be nuts to you but i don't know it works for me like how well do you know your one minute chart how well do you know your arrays are you catching these right because if you're not catching them right and you're just getting frustrated then stay in here a little longer till it starts to make sense because this is not all random shit here these are not all candles that are going oh this is just randomly all over the place you can't use the rules to suit you for higher time frames when lower time frames frustrate you if you can't see the logic of how the algorithm's working at this lower time frame then all the theories you have above don't make sense because then you're just saying, well, they're, they only work for those higher time frames. When Michael teaches fractal price action, you should see it all happening here. And if we go down to a one second chart, you should see it all happening there as well. Now, if you're really crazy and you really like to enjoy this kind of approach, go to the one second chart and practice on a one second chart. That's nuts. That's like some serious, your head's going back and forth and you're, your eyes are darting all, all over the place to catch that. For me, this is just slow enough to say we went from like array to like array inside this small range here. Glad you got that short, Lori. Man, I'm glad you caught that. There's some people caught this up here right at the silver bullet entry right there. And just caught a nice little rush down. Reload. And you've caught all that there. It's the same thing. You've just doubled her, doubled her up on the way down. This was our, was this our objective for price leg? When we're talking about this price leg returning back down again. What was our price leg? Oh yeah, we we're looking at it down here. I don't have that marked on there. That's Sunday's open. So look for here. I thought I drew this out down here. That's the price leg continuation to the downside. And that puts you right in right into the rejection block again. Broke to the upside. Pay yourself at the rejection block. It broke again to the downside. And it says, I'm going short. Come back up. There's your opportunity. Last one right there. Short. Amy for rejection block. Low. Again, you got to be prepared to catch her inside this consolidation. If that's what you want to play. You may just say, look, I see an opportunity. I'm going to grab every little opportunity I can. 10 handles at a time, but be super nimble. You've got to be able to read your PD arrays for, uh, to be that nimble. Take it. Watch. Oh, what a quick $200 profit. Let him do entries. No bigger time frames. He will tell us how deep the water is. Bye, guys. Lots of action on the charts already this morning. Need to distress now. Happy <laughs> trading. Be safe. All right, Laurie Van, go have a good time, buddy. <laughs> paid yourself. Yeah, one of those that paid myself up there. Just catching the reversal, but now you see how you're going to need even more patience on an hourly chart or a 15 minute chart 
once you start to these markets start to clear up and we start to get some better trade trending days these one minute charts can make you quite skittish if this is all you train in is a one minute chart you'll see me i'll get in and out real quick because it makes me kind of skittish right <clears throat> That's why if you trade on a one minute chart for your entry, because you've got a higher time frame premise that says that's an optimum trade entry for me to go long, then or short or wherever, it, for example, I'm not saying that's that spot, but if you find an optimum trade entry for the higher time frame to go short, let's say, and it came back to that optimum trade entry, you find it on a one minute reversal and you catch it right there. Let's say you bought that one there, you bought that perfect entry there for a short. You put your stop loss above that and you just let it buck and now you go back into your one hour chart and you leave this alone you don't even bother coming down here anymore and you just trade on a one hour chart you just wait for it to finally hit your next objective this one you used to get in the perfect entry off your higher time frame that's all i like to see this one hour one minute one been used my niche is i'm showing you guys on a one minute chart all the time how you apply this to your higher time frame charts is entirely up to you but i'm just showing you even if you stayed on a one minute chart you could be still hauling 10 handles at a time or 20 and you do it multiple times Sunday's open. It's got to bounce off of here. Let's put the carrot down there and give it some motivation. How's that? What's this order block? Is that a four hour breaker? Yes, it is. The bottom of a four hour breaker. See how we've eaten all the way through this thing? We came all the way back down, ate into the top of it, all the way through the body of it, ran back up into optimum trade entry, and then blasted. We're blasting all the way through it here. So, this would be really nice to see this as a next price leg down from here to here on a four hour chart. That puts you 96. Let's see what that looks like on the uh, right close to filling that in again. See that? So if that's the next price leg down on a four hour chart. See, to me, we've already eaten through this. It's lost its strength for me. You've already eaten through it once and you you banged around in it below the mean threshold of that candle <clears throat> you want to see this right here because we haven't swung below this low so for me this is not a swing point because we haven't taken out any low on a four hour chart so you've got to run, return back into optimum trade entry that's probably a 50 percent or more of that just draw that from here to here 62 percent Just short of 62%. Ran inside back to the fair value gap here. Or reversal, body trades below it, come back up inside it right here. Oop. Into the mean threshold. I wonder if that's the mean threshold of that one there. To this one here. Nope, just short of it. So that reversal above that old high on a four hour chart brings you into here to go short and you're killing this one on a four hour chart if you're using that as the reversal. If you're using this one as the reversal and you didn't get a chance to get in on it right there, then when that breaks that low and you come back into it, 
for continuation. That will be the breaker you break to the downside. That's why if you do the same kind of principles we're using over here, <coughs> then this breaker becomes the support on the downside. That was what we use if we miss the, the run, which is right here. If you miss that, then you're looking for the breaker to get in on a four hour chart. So if you're looking at a daily and that's your entry right there on a four hour. So if you trade on a daily, that's your entry right here off of this. Once you break below it, if you didn't get in on that there to continue on the downside and you've got to have your stop loss sitting above that high. Now for you, you might you might go, why the hell would you do that? That's way up there. It is. That's where you'd have to put it if you're trading a daily candle. It's a lot of fair value gaps if you catch the true one that gives you the profit. Yeah. This is just a mess in here right now. You're between here and here. They're engineering a lot of liquidity. See how they're making lower lows? It is making a slightly lower low. We're not making, we're equal, equal lows. See that? Big pool of liquidity sitting right here, engineering it on both sides. ES, slightly lower low. NQ, lower low. So lower low, slightly lower low, and no lower low. <clears throat> so far, the uh, Dow has refused to make a lower low. Can you please remove the yellow spot from your screen? The yellow spot. What yellow spot? This yellow? I don't know what you're looking at there, Robin. Please remove the yellow spot. Oh, you retracted his message. Move our carrot to the sidelines. We're waiting for this retracement to finish. See how you threw this one now? Now what you're looking for, see how this, you look at this here, you look at the fair value gap. If we take out the high, Right there. You're inside this range here now created.
swing point. Pay yourself a bunch of times. You don't get a chance to get back on except for here again. So this array to there's nothing down in here. So I'd like to see this just continue on the downside now. Get below here. Come back, find support at that. Get through this order block and continue through. If it doesn't, if it just comes back and taps this and keeps pushing higher, if it breaks that high, then we've got bigger dig into the, <clears throat> the range above us here. Oh, lunch hour. I'd like to see the lunch hour. Take this out here now and then come back into the range. Instead of running all the way back up here and then coming back down. So it could do that too, I suppose. We're coming into that half hour now before lunch. So that's heading for some liquidity. Either take this out or continue running lower. Or take this out and start pulling back into the range again. that inversion right there on the four hour see that that becomes a fair value gap there breaks becomes inversion all the way back down wick are we closing here and starting to run back up into that order block and run higher hmm four hour looks interesting so we got a body above this candle here come back to it it's the breaker and a stop close candle in this swing the body is slightly higher than that one whether you take that one or that one doesn't really matter i suppose body trades above it come back inside it continue to the upside to this one here You want to see <clears throat> this high get taken out to the upside, come back down and start pushing back down into the range or we're still bullish right now. Look at a sell trade model some time ago in New York based on the 2022 model. Up inside this breaker. Or not a breaker, so mm, no, it's mitigation.
Robin, if you're into this, good for you. Well done. Wag, wag, when Rafiq, wag, when Darren, it's been a while. I didn't tune into your live stream. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Rafiq. How did the, uh, um, fasting go? You've made it. That's good to hear. I hope you had a, a wonderful fast. I think it all, I hope it all worked out well for you. Wagwan, I don't know if that means if that's if that's hello. Anthony, do I trade live accounts? Yeah, I do. I trade live accounts. I have them over here. return to the bottom of the week the uh, regular trading hours gap here <clears throat> we've traded above this Let's see how we do here just going to go to the bathroom. My coffee is finally working its way through me here. Uh, it was a great month of fasting. Now it's time to thank these markets. Yes, Rafiq. Yes.
I'm looking back over here again at this. to scroll through these while we're waiting for it to make up its mind what it wants to do. Look for this here. Reprice, rebalance. To go short there, all the way up into here. Dixie, still pushing higher. See this, see this low here? And then this swing here. We expected that to break to the downside on a body close. Ran all across the, the bottom of that fair value gap, ran up above it right there, and then continued to the upside. A one minute chart. Seven thirty swing point run above, come back inside. How you trade that piece right there is entirely up to you. There's the reversal stop loss would go here. There's the reversal doesn't break below it you continue to the upside it's huge run up You manage those two are up to you. There's your swing there. If you're looking for the swing, it's up here. The swing right here. You trade below it, trade up inside it. Squeeze you really good with your stop loss. Your failsafe, my failsafe would have kicked in. 
probably oh no would have come all the way back up to me here and then i would have just sat on that and pulled my stop loss behind it would have got out right there and i would have missed all of that reversal trade back inside it go long reversal you don't get an opportunity to get in on it it ran through one two three closed just below it here where the candle closes take the last one that it crossed over and get short there in this case you wouldn't have got well you might have if you would have caught that there if not then you wait for a return blow through clear out a bunch of lows reversal cleared out a low traded above it come back inside it all the way down into here go long back up to the one we talked about here discount premium all the way up into it bang on the money so you're here to here so this uh, how many times it has to be proved to you but it, it works consistently if you uh and if it doesn't use your fail safe should get you out if you have a fail safe that is So if you're if you're swinging to go long here, and you traded above you here, you're in, and then all of a sudden it traded below you right there. So if you're getting here, here, and here, as soon as it traded below you here, you go, oops, it would have taken your stop if your stop was sitting here. That would have been a full run down and take you out. But the moment it traded below that you go Oof, i'm on the wrong side of this it's going down so it came back up you have one opportunity to get out if your no if your stop loss was there you would have been taken out for sure oh no opened if it didn't come down and tap you out first if it opened and went straight back up you would have an opportunity to get your trade off there then you could say i'm loading back on there to go short And I was, I've told you in the past how many times, how many, uh, how you can uh, reverse your direction based on that. Yeah, I'm going south. Or, hey, I'm going north. Or, am I just coming back inside a range here at 50%? You always have to keep pulling your fib tool just to be sure that you know where you're sitting. And there it was, see, 50% right on the money. And then went south. So it always follows a logical pattern. So you want to see this get below here now. In between here and here. Pull your fib tool from here. Sixty-two percent retracement in here. This turns around and starts booking it back up for the next price leg up. What he's already traded above it right here. Trades above it here, below it here. Now it's above it again. I want to see it get above the premium one though. So Dow Jones is making a higher high. ES is making a higher high. NASDAQ is not. taking NASDAQ some time to get there.
Let me just run back to the rejection block. Yes, higher. Dow, higher. NASDAQ, lower. They broke that high right there with the body. Says I'm going higher. So on the premium array, it broke that premium array to the upside. Come back, find some support out of it. If you can't get in on it, you wait for the breaker. For a body to close above it, come back, find support out of it. <clears throat> and then continue to the upside. We're finally going to get our 50 to 62% retracement back into the range, perhaps. So I continue to the upside now. Excellent. Derek's going to do a uh, market on the close telegram link today. I look forward to that. Mm -hmm. Looking for that 2 p.m. silver bullet.
here in one minute. Just top pick it. And only took three handles. I'd like to see this get taken out now on the downside, come back inside it. See in this range here now. We lose this order block here. And close below here. I want to see this start continuing push up here now. Let's see this stay open. If not, another CAM model one entry right here inside that range 50 percent of that range let's see right on top of these fair value gaps here or this uh consolidation again He's not closing below that. That's good. You want to get through the mean threshold of that candle, otherwise we just could be rolling back over and coming back in here again. I want to see this one get validated here, and this, they would literally between between these two here. this one give way Richard Rowe how do we find the telegram group just go in the link above there's a you'll see links in the description above and uh, in the bio I think it is in this channel and you'll see that there's a uh, a link in there just click that and you're welcome to join our telegram channel we usually go there after the hours and talk about how we see the market and how we uh where we think it's going to go all that kind of stuff On weekends we chat evenings there's lots of people in there having discussions because they're all over the world here we got people up from all over the world that have uh, during the middays they like to have discussions about various trades they're in bitcoin i like to trade bitcoin at nighttime in the especially in the asian session i like to catch some of these uh just amazing runs so here's one of those opportunities where you say here's the swing point see how you missed it right here you couldn't have got in on it there so you look for the breaker that takes out that range right here 
See how it trades below it? A body of the candle trades below it. You trade back up inside it right here, and you get short. And how would you like to enjoy that kind of run? It happens all the time, folks. <laughs> it lurch. If you know what you're looking for, it happens all the time. I've traded, I've got one account where I just trade entirely Bitcoin. And I started that on October, no, March 3rd, that leap one. And it's over 100, 210,000. So just in uh, double the account in a month, just trading Bitcoin. It's a, uh, it's awesome. And not so much fun on an MT5 chart, by the way. On the uh, trading view, it's beautiful. It really is amazing. But MT5, there's wicks everywhere. They do not set up the same way. So you almost have to come into trading view. If you see this setup right here in trading view, oh, you go over here and you see your MT5 chart and you just go click and you enter in right when you see it going there and you don't bother worrying about what you see over here. You load it in on that point. And eventually it gets in sync. Doesn't give you all the fancy opens as it does in here, but you start catching these massive, massive runs. So you'd stay in this until you found a reversal in the opposite direction. Nothing, nothing, nothing right here. As soon as it traded above it, came back into it, you'd be out right there. You'd miss a whole ton, but then you just wait for a, a new reversal that's to happen. Right here, trade back inside it, get short, then you're still back in that trade again. Here, you trade above it, you don't get back into it, you just get back into an order block, reprice, rebalance. Uh, there's a little tiny one right here, I suppose, inside that right there go long aim for imbalance rejection blocks old highs fair value gaps reversal below these lows body trades above it right here comes back trades into it right here go long bitcoin's great like that Okay, so if you're not holding your winners long enough, invest. Ask yourself, what method are you using to manage on the downside? Are you using a trailing stop loss? Are you using a, a fail safe? Are you using, <clears throat> are you using a specific um, model like uh, I'm just have an objective on the front end? I don't have a back end management technique if you don't have a back-end management style then um, something to practice find something in your demo account that you can practice on on the backside management and there's multiple ways you can manage that I've showed you three of them that I like to use and you're welcome to use any one of those Seems like I don't be confident with the trades. Yeah, that's that's perfectly understandable. And that's not so much the, the confidence in the trades as trusting your arrays. 
once you trust those arrays enough if you see them enough and it's a matter of being in here you don't trust something enough until you see it enough and you practice on demo accounts until you you know that hey look that is a logical one i want to trace and you stay in the charts if you come in here and you pop in for a few minutes and you go oh that's a waste of time then and you you're still finding it difficult to manage your trades uh and, and get profitable is because you're not spending the time watching every freaking candle and understanding which arrays it's going to because if you don't then you're uh if this frustrates you and you're not you're looking from one array to the next array and it's you're saying i want this to happen if it doesn't quickly analyze as why did that fail why did that not work out for whatever reason and then fix it adjust always adjust this is a place to tune your skill set it's really about fine-tuning your skill set and you have an opportunity to do it here or you can just continue to get frustrated on higher time frames and wonder why it's not working on a higher time frame and you're losing constantly whereas if you're losing constantly on a lower time frame you can adjust quicker so that when you finally work on higher time frames, you can see it long before it happens. That's just my belief anyway. So we're going into the lunch hour now. Looking for lunch hour to take out a high. Ten thirty. 10, 16, run for those highs. and invest we can we can work on that with you if you're if you're finding it frustrating then uh, pop into the telegram channel and say look show, and show me your chart and say how can i manage this better and i'll give i'll give you whatever advice i can and there's people in there that have got a great uh great knowledge base and may have their own system that may help you out to uh manage the back end of your trade or to find confidence in it So really, we're in this candle here right now and that one there inside this little consolidation. You want to see the mean threshold to hold and then come back to this candle. Right there. So now you say, all right, now see how it's bouncing off of that? It tapped it, popped back, and you go, okay, so now you're between that one and that one, and they're literally touching each other. So you've you've gone from the mean threshold, you found a PDRA, and you've come back to this guy here. So now you're either going to push up higher into this little piece right here, the mean threshold of that candle, that one and that one, and then you're going to decide, all right, I got to go somewhere else. I've got to go to that array and that array or that one and that one or i've got to just blast straight through and come back into a because if you're looking at the higher range here we're in the 
we're hitting the 50 percent of the premium of the premium range <laughs> again here's the here's your fib tool And there's quarters see how right there you're hitting 50 percent of the premium and discount it came back down doop, tap the body again and it's like okay i'm stuck in here the algorithm's going oh i gotta get out of here i gotta have that run up into a premium of the premium array which is just above that 25 percent into that range there hit that meme threshold of that candle and run back down into a discount inside here well what have i got left if this is the premium and this is the discount and we've been working that whole area in this premium range, I've been working the premium discount, premium discount of the premium portion of the larger range. Now you've got to go, I run to the premium. I got to get down to the discount. Then I got to run to the premium. Now see how it's just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So now if you're in a bigger range, it says I'm either going to have to extend this range higher and create a new price leg up higher or i have to break down into this discount range where there's an array down here that i haven't yet reached for does that make sense hopefully you see that you understand what's going on there so always kind of keep those things in mind and where you are at then you can play inside these small ranges and then in the bigger ranges when it breaks free from that you start to go okay I'm going to reach down to a discount array. So this down here is yet to be hit. That whole discount portion of that range that we're in right now hasn't been hit yet. We're just hitting premium and discounts inside the premium portion of that range. Building liquidity over lunch. I agree, my friend. I agree. You know, it's set to come all the way back up into that premium array again. Now it's pushing. That says I've run out of arrays inside here. I've got to start pushing lower. I've already run the highs out there. So now I have to start pushing lower into a discount array. See how it just makes it's more logic. It makes more sense. And if that was a daily candle, that's how you'd be looking at that on a daily or an hourly or a four hour. It doesn't really matter. The whole purpose of this channel is just kind of show you guys how to read price action as it's happening so that you get more confident at your trade style for your entries and you get better at deciding when it fails, when it doesn't fail for you at whatever time frame you're on. So look for, see now that becomes the breaker because we ran above these old highs. So the moment a body trades below it, and you come back up to it, you get short down into the discount array inside that range. Then you look at this order block here, and then you look at that uh, mean threshold there.
you want to see this close below here now. There's your discount array. Tapped it. So it's just enough to take out these 11 o'clock, 10.30, or 10.40. Just enough to clear out the liquidity there and go lower. Because now if we break through here, we close below the mean threshold there, you're in a bigger range now. And this fair value gap here is not a perfect fill yet. So look for the, a run down into this candle and this candle. And now you've got some, see how the algorithms now, it's, it was banging around, it's getting cons compressed, compressed, compressed. Already ran the highs out. Likelihood of it going lower, much lower or much higher because we've already ran out highs. We haven't taken out any lows. So bang, now you're starting to run at a discount. We've already run through the mean threshold of this one candle. So now usually when you get three arrays all in one candle, your ass is next as Michael puts it. Now it's come back and fill that fair value gap nicely. Back to the order block. Push through that, now you're getting a real good discount. This becomes a breaker. Body trades below it, comes back up, finds some support off of this, you can continue down. So if you went short there, stop loss goes just above the breaker. If you go just above that spot right there. Because this is the fail safe for me. I swung below the low. If it pops up above, comes back down, finds support at it, then we're looking for going higher, right? So that's the fail safe. That's, there's no reason why I should put stop loss above that because if it fails here, then I know why it's going to go up there. It'll turn right there. If it doesn't and continues down, it's keying off of that breakdown below. Come back up. Classic body trades below it. There, there's your breaker. Trade off the breaker, go short. If I'm wrong and it takes that high out, then we're going back up there. So that's my fail safe. That's my plan. If it fails, it fails. I like it's not a big deal it just means of, of that that swing is now going higher and not this reversal happens not the breaker happens so which one are we trading here well look, we're looking for an overall bias for the day is still down so we're going to take the short because it's a higher probability for me than the reversal back up here again just because because those highs have been cleared out by that little quick stop run there that's my logic, could be wrong, but that's what I'll go with. So now I go into it. profits and I don't care. It's a stress-free trade now. If it gets to there, right there, you take 450 bucks and you move to the sidelines. So if it tears through here, am I going to judge myself if it tears through here now? No. You just put 450 bucks in your pocket and a logical entry that made sense. If it tears through, great. I got another one going over here. <laughs> I just want to show you that array to array, you can make some cash at that, right? Now, do you stay in this longer term in a lunch hour or is this just a rejection block that's going to turn around and come right back up into that range again 
I don't I like to see it trade a body through this come back and find support at that would be nice because that would be another parent breaker uh, run of that whole run above so it would be nice to see that pop through here like that and start going Did that make sense to you guys? The whole, the logic behind the, the trade plan? I sent you a DM, boss man. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Invest. We'll work on that, buddy. We'll work on it. We'll uh, try and find a way to, I'll do, I'll try and do another trade here and show you the back end, a different way to manage the back end of this. I should have thought about that while I did this trade. I could have just stayed in that one for you. So let's say let's say we took that trade right here. Let's pretend it's no use putting it in now. It's a little late. So I'm going to put the sticks here so you get an idea of invest. So watch what I do here. So let's say we get this. Um, that'll drive me nuts. Sorry. So let's say that was our trade right there. We entered in off that breaker. And we're looking for the fail safe. Here's the one method is the fail safe method. Um, one, okay, first method is we're aiming for here, downside objective. If you reach your downside objective right there, you're out. Okay, if you reach your downside objective, you're out. Whatever your downside, uh, that's front end. Okay, back end would be multiple different ways to manage this. One would be, um, a trailing stop loss it's fixed and if it turns back against you within your trailing stop loss you'll get taken out uh, another method is to watch these fair value gaps and just keep trading to the one behind it so that fair value gap there this one that's forming here right now I would see because it's so far away I would go to here in other words if I break this candle here on the upside and come back to it um and we're in this long this could be the potential fair, fair value gap so i want my i'm in profits and i want to hold for a longer array down here the fail safe is going to follow me up here or follow follow it down i've already traded back to the breaker so i don't expect it to trade back there a second time now there's your fair value gap so this is where the swing happens if it trades above and comes back to it then we're expecting to come back into that range a bit more if it doesn't then it continues down that's my fail safe right there my stop loss it's a logical place based on a, a, a swing point below a low that we could get a turn right inside a rejection block which is, which has happened so many times already i'm prepared to take a very minimal loss if this reverses on me but if it doesn't and we get another new low and it starts to push through this low here there's one of two things you can do you can trail that stop loss right in behind it saying i don't want to see it break that high again i want to see that low get taken out and keep pushing down lower then this becomes an order block like this guy here and i want to and i'd be positioned right behind it here so as soon as we break below it i'd be positioned behind it because i wouldn't want to see that order block get taken out on a logical side, right? So this is one of those, there you go. So now you can move your stop loss to here. We'll, we'll stick with the, uh, instead of that there, we'll use the same one with the fail safe, okay? Did our objective get hit yet? This is the first objective down here, I guess. Oh, that's that, this was that uh, price leg. See how the price leg hit perfectly there? We tapped it, price leg completed. Okay. Anybody was working on price legs up there, that was it. That was a perfect hit right there. So now you could be pulling this super tight. You could be like, I'm going to go right there. If I lose that, if we start digging into that fair value gap again, I'm not interested in playing. We haven't, we haven't, we haven't. I don't want it to. See how these fair value gaps just haven't been traded back through? So you don't want it to trade back through it. That could be another way you manage it. 
And if it trades back through, you take your profits out right there and be happy with whatever happens from this point. Because you follow the logical, what made sense to you logically. If you follow the fail safe rule, you'll be right there. And if that side breaks to the upside, comes back and trades into it, you get out there. Because now that's your swing to return back up higher. I hope that makes sense to you. Invest, is that Tim? I don't have a DM in here yet. Yeah, I don't have you as a in a DM here. What's your call sign in there? Is it still invest in here? If it is, I'll, uh, sometimes I have to DM you first. Now we're getting a lot of people in here now. It's awesome. Some people don't want to put names at all. I don't, you must have a different name in there, invest under a different name. What's your, uh, yeah, I don't have you coming in as a, uh, What's the what's your call sign in there? Ah, Tim. Yeah. Okay. I see Tim's now. I didn't know if Tim was a uh... There's Tim. Yep. Tim, I see you. This is invest. Okay, I got you up there. Oh, look at that. See that? Now you just start to go. Now I see that big break. I come to here and say, I don't want to see that get lost now. I don't want to see that get lost now. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. I'm liking the live account right now, too. So. You want to see the next one. See how the, the, fail, the if you're managing it from the back end, you don't want to see that if that breaker right there, see how that took that breaker out and you trade back to the breaker right there, you're short right there, right off of consolidation. You're also cam model one entry, beautiful cam model entry, like sexy, sexy cam model. And down you go running and you just manage these stop losses all the time, or sorry, these fair value gaps. All the time there's a fair value gap open and we don't have anything that breaks to the upside. I'm staying in this thing all the way down. That's the way you can manage it. And you're bringing it to a logical level of saying, I don't want to see this break here. So this one right here, I don't want to see that break right there. There's your fair, fair, uh, fair value gap. We've now broken that old low. So now you pay yourself at that low if you've got a portion on, take a portion off, aim for your next one, take a portion off, take a portion off at these equal lows down here. And you, or if your mass, if you want to keep the mass amount on, let's say you had five handles on this. Okay. So you put five handles on and you're starting to run down and you go, uh, I don't want to take a portion off at each one of these. I want to keep my five handles on. Here's how you keep your five handles on right there. So you've got maximum profits all the way following you down until a logical break occurs on the other side and then you've maxed out. Or pull your FIB tool from high to low and do your 50%, 62%, 79%. We're way past 79% already anyway. So if this is the next price leg down on the four hour, we're looking for way down here, right? So you four hour people are just getting super excited now because we knew this was... We said this was getting broken, broken multiple times. That was the downside run. You've got a chance to run right up inside here to get your short. 
on four hours this whole the last four hours you guys have been killing it on a four hour chart so you watch this here if we get taken to the upside you're out you've made yourself a low you've paid yourself at that low you've paid yourself down here at that low right there already and or you've you're just sitting here with your full, five full handles right there ready to if this takes it out to the upside we have a reversal happening below a logical turn like holy smokes this looks beautiful for a reversal now Don't be pissed, buddy. Don't be pissed. That's a gamble. Like Michael says, that's a gambler's mentality. Just get excited about what you're learning and what you're seeing. Like This should just get you like totally pumped. If you're pissed, reverse that. You're getting pissed because you see there's a logic here. You're getting pissed because you think, I, I could have caught that. No, 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 no. You're seeing the logic of it. Get excited about this. This happens all the time. We're on a one minute chart, my friend. You're on a one minute chart and you're going to see, you see the logic of this and you're going, man, I could be in a huge run here. Now that I see this, is this the only one that is, you're ever going to see? Yeah, get pissed. Like you missed it, man. You missed the fucking boat. That was it, Tim. You blew it, man. Your whole thing is gone because you missed the only run that's ever going to happen ever on the charts. Get excited. Get excited about this. Because if you see logic in what I'm showing you here, man, that should pump you up. Not get you pissed because you missed it. Get pissed happy. You should be pissed drunk, smiling to yourself, going, ooh, I'm happy. I'm just drunk on happy juice. Because you see the breaker, trade below it, trade back to it, get going. You Another breaker, you trade below it, you come back inside it, you get... You go lower, you've got your fair value gaps on the way down, you're managing your trade on the way down. If that breaks that low right now, we want that sucker to slam right up into here. But I want to break that low first. If it doesn't, if it trades back above it, I want to see a big bold candle get through that, take me out big time. Now you might be saying to yourself, because it took that low out, I'm sucking this thing in really snug and tight. Like you could be right here and say, I'm out right now and I'm good with that. I took the low out. If we pull back into that range again now and start run driving it down for Tuesday, that's cool too. And I am managing that on my other account. Too. I'm doing the same thing. I'm sitting right here. On my live account i'm doing the same thing i'm aiming for lower all the time i get validation in that this is where your your thing will go and get excited about this tim do not get pissed at yourself that's the wrong mindset to get into you're, that's a gambler's mindset because then you're just angry about decisions you made in the past and all you're doing is burning inside your neural pathways that i'm gonna judge myself if i screw this up if I make a choice right now and screw this up, I'm allowed to beat myself up in five minutes based on a logical decision I made. Because if you're getting angry at yourself, man, it's all bad, bad neuroscience. I'm telling you, really bad neuroscience. So again, here's another thing you can do. You're right near the bottom of this thing. Pay yourself right there at that rejection block. Now we're going to take this sucker and we're going to put it right here. There's that old low. I'm clearing that one out of it just so it doesn't confuse too much. So I don't want to see it come back through here now. Even though it could logically come back to that low. Yeah, it could come back to that low. But it's not. It's going to keep going. Yeehaw. Are we going to finally get our freaking lows? This would be painful if this ends up running through here and driving all the way down for the rest of the day. Hopefully I've showed you how you could stay on the horse all day long here, watching the switching and making money on the reversals, counter trend trading all the way.
and then that finally breaks down you get to see the breakdown there's not a time in here where we got thrown off the horse not a time we got thrown off the horse if you got thrown off the horse it's because you jumped off fear got you out of that and again see how it's taken off from me i'm not i'm not sweating this given i'm still in it live but this uh i'm not sweating this from a but i want to treat this like a live account i just made 450 bucks coming into here i don't know about you guys 450 bucks to some of our friends down in morocco in this and in belize down in south america wherever those that's a lot of money to those people that's a lot of money to those people imagine how much you're locking in now logical level so do we have a fair value gap in here nope so now i want to be above this order block right here see how that order block can swing low i don't want i don't want to see it start driving up through this swing low through the mean threshold of that candle if we lose that mean threshold of the candle to the upside not a good sign but see how there's a little swing point right here i want that 38 seconds to close leaving that open if it does where's my stop loss going to go Give me a time. Where do I put my stop loss invest? Work with me here. Get out of your anger. Let's get into this. Focus on it. Where do we put the stop loss? If that stays open, give me a time. Give me a time. Quick, quick, quick. Give me a time. Where am I going to put it? Where's my stop loss going to go? Four seconds. Three, two, one. Quick, where's it going to go? Right there. Watch this. See how the body's trading above it? If it takes us out, it takes us out. And that just took us out. Now watch. Back to the order block. Yeah, it could be a logical place for it to come back to inside that small little range. This would be one of those denied again. See how it makes equal lows there? Equal low, come back up in here and start mucking around with you guys' head again. Here's a reversal potential. Watch the there it is. There it is. Now I'm bullish. And if I'm wrong and it trades below it, I'll put a stop loss right in here. Now don't actually trade this, but I'm just gonna show you here. So see how it came back and took us out? So there's the reversal that happened. It shows you, hey, look, I'm going higher again. So wait and see now what happens. See now, here's the potential entry for the swing point. And we've swung below here. It's a logical place for us to catch a, a reversal. Inside this little range right here, there's no upper PDRA for us to confirm it off of. So you want the perfect entry right here. If it fails, that's the stop loss right there. If it takes us out, I'm okay with that. Stop loss will go right, right here. That's going to take us out. So now you go bearish again. See, but it came right back to that spot there. Still took us out. I still that's my that's my fail safe right there. And I sometimes miss out on these opportunities for them to go lower, but that's my fail safe. If it trades above it. I'm out. As soon as it trades back into it, you can get out. That literally came back and tapped the stop loss. So that would have been out here. Now, if it continues on going even further south, you say, oh, well, my fail I got to tweak my fail safe some more, or I got to trust that my stop loss, I'm going to put my stop loss here. I want something that's a significant run above that little range when that was from here to here. I'm not looking for excuses. I'm just trying to find ways to uh, 
make my own skill better. Uh, oops, I want to go equilibrium. So it came all the way back to an optimum trade entry inside that little range, back to a, a breaker. Makes sense. And that's why it's continuing on. And that was in a discount. Makes sense to me. So I gave I gave up that in a discount range when it was just reaching back and see it's still below 50%. I gave up on that right there. So I have to tweak my rule to be if I break above there, I'm going to allow that fail safe to have wiggle room back to this breaker or an optimum trade entry. And then I just have to let my stop loss take me out. That's what I have to do. So that's going to be my modification now to my my rule. Not upset, just and I just closed out my. I did the same thing on my live account. I closed it out as well. So uh, if that continues on now, oh well, then you just take your profits that you made and we wait for the next swing point to happen. That is my modification now. So it's not failure, it's feedback. My feedback is fair value gap below, run above. I usually get out there, but you've got to give it a chance to run back inside the range that it's in to a logical level. The array algorithm goes back, comes back down, makes sense. See now we've got this one here and this one here. You're in a smaller range here now. So if we lose this one to the upside, We'll keep an eye on that now. So I may have just been out a couple of minutes beforehand, but we'll see. Because we just took out. What's the low on that candle? 88, big figure. 85. So it took out that low as well now. See, that's where you kind of, yeah, logic makes sense that we came back to that continuation. So that the stop loss would be from here to here now. Because now we've continued through here and you, I'd be tracking that down better. Okay, good. I get to learn. I get to learn. Jonas, I'm learning so much. Elijah, thank you so much. You're very welcome, Jonas. You're very, very welcome. Almost perfect fill. Just looked almost dumped 100 handles since. <laughs> yeah, well, hey. She happens, man. This could be the final rundown into that final area we've been looking for this whole time. Oh, I'm glad uh, Christian took some time off. See you in two weeks. Oh, that's awesome, Christian. I'm glad he's uh, going to take some family time, get away from the charts for a bit. Mike caught another awesome day.
Mike T had a nice run again today. Good for you, Mike. Simo. Simo show. Good for you, man. So watch here. This could be all these probes down all the time, and then this turns into a wick on the way up. Look for this reversal here. I looked for that there. That one made sense that it came back to here. We're already through the mean threshold of this candle. So now this looks... Droga, board alive and trade journaling. Oh, we did a video on sharing today's trade. Very clear and simple. Good for you, Droga. Welcome, Richard. Richard Rowe. Welcome, welcome. We traded ICT methods exclusively here in the group. Indeed, we do. You were bearish today. I use protection zones to estimate price runs. I traded the Dow up prior to the open, then bearish. Yes, good for you, D DC. How to use projection zones. Standard two to two. He does love those. Good for you, Derek. Well done, man. Oops. Kind of missed that one a bit. Instead, of, I mean, it's point. Go to index and type in projection zones and give you ICT material on determining projection zones. You draw a direction. You're the bearish before you open. Type of projection zones against you. ICT material determining projection zones. I love it. So you see how when you look at this range from here to here, like we were looking from there to there, that made sense that it would come back to an order block there and break through here. Now I understand that makes sense. But this one here, it's overlapping. So I wouldn't want to see it break through that bottom again. If it does, then this is that consolidation and I'm just getting beat up. So the mean threshold I wouldn't want to see get lost. And my stop loss is so tight that it can wick through and snap me out here. But there's the return to the bottom of it with perfect entry. That would be your perfect entry there for a long. And because it snapped back up like that, I'd be like, ding. Bring your stop loss up. If it breaks that high up there, stop loss rate right to break even. It should not come back down here again. So now I'm going to pull it right into there. Should not come back down there. If it does, then who cares? I'm out means it's just consolidating for a while i want to see it blow through uh well it's already blown through the mid midpoint here once twice it's, it's getting weaker this candle's getting weaker we just got validated there don't come all the way through again i'm gonna have to stick it right down in here It's not till it breaks that high that I can start moving that up. And there's a little tiny fair value gap right here. You see that? If I stretch this out, you see it right there. We haven't taken, we've taken a high here though. So just keep your eyes on that area there. You're inside this one and this one. You don't want to see this one get taken to the downside on a close because it'll also be a close a reversal on this one. So that's what I want to see. Just bounce off of here and start moving back up.
Michael's got a lot of videos out there today. A lot of uh, pictures out there today. Aaron, how are you? Now I'm like right here. Protect your money. What the hell? We'll go right there. I want to just see it tap that. It's probably going to come back. I can put it down here. Oops. took me out before I could adjust accordingly. It's all right. If it comes back into our range again, then I'll get another long there. This is like a buffering thing here now. Come back and tap it. There we go. I'll get in there. It's back inside that range again. So it's like a buffer. You pay yourself there. Comes back, getting yourself another opportunity to go along there. Did I just buy that or sell that? Oh, I sold it. Crap. I was supposed to buy it. Hit balls. Ah, you saw that. That was a screw up on my part. I'm used to. Ah, oh, dang it. Come on, give me another chance to do that. It's a buy, not a sell. Hot diggity dang. I screwed that one up. I screwed that one up. See, it happens. You still screw things up. I hit the wrong button. Should have been a, a buy, not a sell. Come all the way down into there. And we'll buy it this time. I've got no swing point that I can see except for maybe, you know. That'll make up for the loss I took there. Let's manage this from the other side so that you get an idea of what this is like there, uh, Tim. I don't want to see it keep coming back. If it's going to revisit this, we'll take that off there. Actually, no, we'll do this. We'll do the other method. We'll do the pay yourself at this next PDRA. And if it comes back in, we'll buffer the crap out of this. should be logical should be down here if we close below this come back to it you got to get out and you got to take a loss from there to there that's even if you manage to get out at a perfect exit
My door. Oh, let me just put this right in here so you get to see this one again. It does come back to here. Look at the one there. So we're going to do the whole main floor, okay? So all through there, they're all what? All through the, the office. You want to drop uh, it in? Nope. I'll bug you just for a minute and then you can use it. Okay. Sounds, sounds good. Sounds good. Thanks. <clears throat> okay. So as you saw, they would, we took it the fair, uh, the rejection block. So if I'm wrong, oops. Now I see this one right here. I'm getting out there. Just because we got a swing point here. There's a swing there. You've broken it to the downside. You come back up, get out. So not that trade that I wanted to get long on. We got one here, one here. And get out of that. So you just sit and wait now because we're in a consolidation. So that made that for that screw up I made on the uh Pressing the wrong button, then you get the right. You got to a chance to break out of that. And now we're looking for a reversal short. Stop also go up here. And that will close me out if I'm wrong. Should be really waiting. This is just way too consolidated. See how and this small little zone to work in it here. Now we've got another one reversed here for this direction. So I should deserve to get hit here. It'll take me out of here. See how we've got one here to go short. And then you've got one here to go long. They're literally overlapping each other there. And I just got saw it and was like, well, I, I want it to return down to here now and get out to go long. But it took me out. So that's the logical level of that range. So you can see how I got taken out there. One was saying go short, it took the lows. This one says, great, if you've taken the lows, here's a new one to go long from that point on. Now, that's why you don't get in this, stay out. So all that 175, I just lost here and then made back, I just gave back again. So 
So this is that buffering thing, right? You get to buffer off of this guy here, still going long. Because I just did the same thing again. You see that? Discount. You got to allow the discount one to come back to a discount array right there perfectly. So that one, you got to allow for that. I just got caught again on the opposite side. I just got caught on the opposite side. That threw me off there. Took the high, goes low, took the low, goes high. And we're still in a, a range where all it did was just come back down to a discount array <laughs> right there. I just got caught. I just thought I'd learned that lesson, but I didn't. <laughs> That's where you got to have the wiggle room inside the consolidation. <laughs> See, you can, if you're not focusing, you can still get caught out. Everybody's suddenly gone quiet now. They're all over there on Telegram chatting away. Nice. I love the fact that you guys are all exchanging, helping each other out there, man. I love it. It's good to see. Good to see. This was a unicorn setup, for example, overlapping breaker. Lock and fair value gap. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, yep. Look at this Dow Jones. It's got a nice little reversal now. See this? Reversal. Body closes above it. See, in an MT5, that looks... This actually is a body that closes above and wicks back down into this. Beautiful. Looks better in an MT5 than it does in here. Hmm, look for this stuff up here. Go back into the range. So that was the reversal there. Off this breaker here. Check above, come back down inside it, come along. So look for further continuation to the upside. Okay. 
Yep. My flooring guys here. So I'll look for this conclusion, the Fair Valley gap to fill here. See now this is where I, I, I've got to learn that lesson of that reversal and give myself some wiggle room that it doesn't always mean just because it took that out and I'm inside that range and we've got a reversal happening below an old low, which is a significant low that uh, I think it's just reversing on me again every single time I see one of these happen with a wick above an old high. That makes sense that it would reverse that time. So I got to give that more wiggle room. Got to document that. That'll journal. You have to journal entry that tonight. You're all done. Wow, you're quick. So you can give it. So you can you can just give us the. Uh...
Thanks very much. Ooh, look at that. Literally came up, filled that fair value gap right there. Oh, it didn't. It did not. It did not. How would you trade that? That did not, that reversed on you like baboom. Reprice rebalance right here. Body trades below it comes back up inside it right here. If you don't know what reprice rebalance is, you would have missed that. Look it up on uh, Michael's ICT index for confirmation. So you want to see a low get taken out here, reprice rebalance, goes down, comes back up quickly, and then snaps back away from it. Reason for lower lows. Order block. You want to see it get above this, and then get back into this one. So you're between here and here. Watch the mean threshold of that candle. This would be crazy if it just kept driving down today. Now just watch how it acts off of here, just so you guys can practice uh, watching these specific reprice rebalance moments. Versus a fair value gap versus an inversion fair value gap. So if you trade below this, come back into it, then you're bearish. You're already bearish at that point. But you're like doubly bearish if you're down here and you break below this. Now, if you're buffering off of this, every time it trades back to a fair value gap, you get out, comes back in, fair value gap, comes back in, fair value gap, comes back in, fair value gap, fair value gap, sorry, rejection block, rejection block, rejection block, rejection block. And you just keep taking those out and you come all the way back into the fair value gap, uh, low midpoint and the high as key levels to get out at. You see the reversal happening here. Come back inside, get short. Rejection block, pay yourself there. Old low, mean threshold. And you can either get long again there to get back into that range. And your stop loss goes down here. And that's where your fail safe kicks in. So just pretend like you've got that on there right now. I'm not trading this, but if you're looking at this now, you look for, aha. You don't want to see it just, you want to see it snap off of that now. Snap off of that and start heading back up again. Or we're driving down to rejection block again on this end. Watch where that closes on 22 seconds. Oof, we've got to rip right through you and take you out. 
or going lower. So if you're looking at re this reprice rebalance, again, go study that in the ICT index. He'll bring you to the right video on what that is. And that's, a, that's one that he just touches on and he will touch on in his book according, uh, according to him. That's uh, something he'll touch on later in his book, but that is the reversal there. And for the continuation on the downside, looks like we're finally going to take these lows out. And done. So you see how you counter trended this, even though the trade was going to go down, you counter trended this and still made a bunch of money on the way in the right direction all the way up until it reversed on you you saw if you catch this specifically you see the reversal and i don't know if you're trading that but at least you got out of your long in this point if you're looking at the a reversal where you actually see a gap there's one right here body trades below it here you wick all the way up inside and then it finally drops on you there. Oh, see, MT5, that filled completely with a body yet. <laughs> that's how odd, that's how different they can be between futures and MT5. MT5 filled that with a body. I actually took a body through that. Wow. Next price leg down. Jeepers, that's a huge price leg down if that's the next one. It's 800 or 18,000, big figure. Oh, nice. Let's you trade future indices with free non-delayed price data. That's, that's pretty nice. So here's the, uh, here's the reversal. If you missed the reversal and you didn't catch this uh, little guy right here, look for the breaker. Here's the breaker, body breaks below it here, trades back up inside the breaker, you get it short right there. I didn't see that one till now, I just saw it. But that's that whole thing that we talked about over here. Catch that one short. It's the same thing here, breaker, trades below it, comes back up into it, trade it short. So don't get hung up if you miss this or you miss this, look for the breaker 
trade the breaker short. And uh, here I am preaching it, and I still didn't catch it myself. So, twenty minute top of the hour macro. Yep. Yeah. That's the silver bullet, one, one o'clock silver bullet right there. <laughs> There's so many confluences that said that, that was the best place to go. Ah, again, silver bullet. Does this remind you of something this morning? Uh, the silver bullet, the 10, where was the 10 o'clock one? Oh, it was over here. That was the silver bullet at 10 o'clock. That's a 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock silver bullet right there. Oh, sorry, right here. Get excited, people. Don't get mad. Don't get mad if you missed it. If you see the logic in it, get excited because the more you see the logic, the less likely you're is you're going to miss it. And the more fun you're going to have when you catch it, you'll feel the logic in it. And it just makes a lot of sense. But don't get upset. If you miss it, you miss it. There's plenty. The year is still new, my friends. We still got plenty of time. There's so much uncertainty in the markets. There's a lot of volatility. That's what we like. Volatility makes the markets move. And these one minute charts is where you're going to see it make the move before it moves or before everybody else does. And this thing here I might give you your... Uh... Next price leg down. There it is. Here's your price leg. Affinitio. that whole price leg has been repeated right in there love it um, look at that tap tap now back to the daily where are we sitting at for this uh retrace right into here now let's put that guy Right there. Downside objective for the day. Oh, I love it. Look at that beautiful little. If you caught the silver bullet entry this morning and you just left that one to ride all the way down to that objective today, that would have netted you 304. That would have netted you three hundred and forty nine pips. Three hundred and forty nine <laughs> pips. Sorry, handles, not pips. Three hundred and forty nine handles. Hello. <laughs> That's exciting. That's exciting. You guys should be excited about that. Man, that's some stellar running today. Look at Bitcoin, he says. Hello. Wow. Well, that's the that's the fair value gap you want to see break to the upside. Now that you've taken these lows out, you want to see that break to the upside and get long. Otherwise, we're still got more downside on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin is finally making a little Look at the dip down here. So if you don't catch this, um, this here, you catch the breaker, 
where's the breaker you run down you come back up inside the breaker hello you caught yourself a monster run right off that breaker there at 66,000 and we we're sitting at 63,009 so a $2,000 drop two thousand dollar drop and you don't have a body break in to the downside oh you get one right there oh no you didn't break that swing point so you gotta wait and you go down 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 everything's good finally breaks to the upside here you would have been out, right? It would have probably taken you out there. Yes, probably would have taken you out right there. Then you wait till you find something to get back in on again. To the downside. That's to the upside. Gets you an opportunity to go in long. Tick, 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 tick on the way up. Then it breaks to the downside right there. Trade back up inside up there. And you caught all that down, run down there. It reverses on you right there. You get out there. Your stop loss was here. It reversed on you right there. You're out. If you kept going short right there or kept going long right there, would have taken you out right there. You wait for it to break that old high there. And it does right there. It comes back and does not give you an opportunity to get in there. Wait for reversal. Takes it out there. You don't get a chance to get in on it. Look for a breaker. They're not their way down here. So you wouldn't have caught that one. But yeah, there's a lot in there. A lot of them in there. Holy, it just blew right through that. This is what I'm waiting for. The April low, boys. You get your freaking stocks ready to go. Ready to go. This is what I was waiting for. <laughs> oh, my God. I hope you guys, I hope somebody is still in this. I hope you guys are still in this. Oh, man. This is the April low I've been calling for. Please no tendencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 400 handles already this morning. This is where you get ready to buy your stocks. This is where you get your ETFs. The big swing in April, midpoint. Hope you guys had an opportunity to capture all these spots that I uh, I gave you here today for these runs, these delicious, delicious runs. This is the weekly fair value gap now. See how we banged into the weekly and we just stopped right. The bodies have stopped right on the low of the weekly fair value gap. That price leg is done. I'll get rid of that one. So that was the uh, my high one, two, three, 
was the uh, daily. That's why I was ignoring those candles. It worked out nicely. Got one more opportunity to get in short there. That's the swing on the daily. It took forever to get it. And when these ones weren't valid, you cut through all of them and get back to this mess again because they've all been validated and crossed out. So they're just the things that confuse people. Cut them out. Get back into that. And that was a nice little one. Almost two entries right there for this objective for the day. Excellent. So if this continues to rip through this mean threshold here, I'm looking for that rejection block, these lows, and even down into here. Now, some of you may be going, there's no way it's going down there. Don't say no way until you see each array give way. So if this one ends up closing below here, look for the rejection block. We'll see how this acts off this weekly fair value gap now. I think it's a weekly inversion fair value gap. No, it's just a price imbalance, sorry. If we close below that imbalance, come back up inside it, find some support, continue pushing down, look for the next imbalance down here again. And then you've got a whole weekly section from here to here as a fair value gap, which is a draw on liquidity as far as I'm concerned. But that's a long way away yet. And if we get a monster candle this week, just ripping through here. Look for that downside objective here the next two days or three. It could be a Wednesday candle, Tuesday, Wednesday back into here. And then run back up. You don't want to lose the mean threshold of that candle. Which is also the high of that fair value gap there. Anyway, that's a long ways away yet. And we catch, we caught it all the way through on the one minute chart, jumping in and out. And if you're a long player, then you could have stayed in that longer. I think that's going to be it for me. It's 11.30 my time, which is 1.30. Uh, Derek, I think, will post something on the Telegram channel. So if you guys want to get in on Derek's uh, show this afternoon for the uh, close of the day and the 2 o'clock uh, Silver Bullet, look for that show. That'll be happening in the next uh, 25 minutes or so. Uh, pop in, see him. I encourage you because the guy's really smart and he sees a lot of really cool stuff. <clears throat> so until then, I'll see you guys for the last day tomorrow. And uh, hopefully on Wednesday. I know Wednesday will be no trade day for me because I'll be, yeah, I'll be on the plane. So it won't be till Thursday I meet up with you guys again. But until then, I will see you tomorrow, bright and early. I'll see you on Derek's channel on the Telegram. Thanks again for tuning in, you guys. I appreciate you spending your time with me. I know you have lots of people out there you can spend time with. Uh, hopefully you got to see something and learn something today on the one-minute chart on reading price action. <clears throat> and uh, you got to make yourself a little demo dollars today. Uh, if you like what you see, hit the like button. And if you want to stick around, by all means, subscribe. And we're happy to have you. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care of each other out there. See ya.